friends and colleagues, we will now uh, continue the forever long standing committee meeting. Uh, the final stage, I hope, is today. We are soon moving to the item number 26. Here is now sitting alter ego for Rick Dams. Uh, he, our president, he couldn't chair the meeting. And, and for me personally, it's nice to be in Strasbourg and, and uh, seeing how it happened and how it happens here. You are, most of you, obviously, all, all of you are now in distance where I have been also sitting earlier. And I must say so you that I'm missing you here. It's actually a nice environment here, but not so nice because you are not here. You are at different places. But nevertheless, uh, welcome to the standing committee meeting and, and the meeting is now uh, uh, resumed. The debate today uh, is the urgent procedure debate on the, on the item is new crackdown on political opposition and civil dissent in Turkey. Urgent need to safeguard Council of Europe standards. That's an urgent item. And I remind you that the opening of the meeting last Monday, the standing committee voted in favor of adding to the agent, agenda a debate on the urgent uh, on the urgent procedure, exactly this, this debate. The matter was sent to the monitoring committee for report, and the monitoring committee met on Friday, the last to adopt a report which will be presented by the two co-rapporteurs, Mr. Thomas Hammerberg from my neighboring country, from Sweden, and Mr. John Howell uh, from United Kingdom. The report contains a draft resolution which will be put to vote at the end of the debate. So we will have first the discussions and then, then, then voting uh, on, on, on the memorandum. Now I would like to give the floor to the co-rapporteurs first to introduce uh, the report. Uh, and uh, the co-rapporteurs will have two minutes, two minutes in total to share which may be divided uh, between presentation of the report and reply to the debate. So be, be, be careful, co-rapporteurs, how you're using your time. And I first call Mr. Hammerbeck. What's so good? The floor is yours. Mr. Hammerbeck, you haven't uh, yes, yet asked the request for the floor because we cannot open it for you before you made the request, so please. Ah, Mr. Hammerbeck is not connected, I heard. What to do? What to do? I'll be asking Mr. Howell, Howell to make a presentation. Okay, Mr. Howell, if Mr. Hammerbeck is not there, is it so? He was, but he'll be lost. Sweden is far away from Strasbourg. He's not. No, Mr. Howell, I will ask you now to make the presentation, please. Thank you indeed for, for, for that. Um, I, I'm sorry Thomas isn't here. He was, he was we'd arranged that, 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 that he would start. But um, uh, let, let, let me say that uh, we had a very successful monitoring committee last week. And, um, and of course, due to the pandemic, we haven't been able to travel to Turkey. But we have always stressed that dialogue with the Turkish delegation and the Turkish authorities, and indeed with Turkish civil society, was needed to address the issues and to look at the, 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 the solutions. Um, uh, of course, we're worried by the situation. And, and by, by the way in which opposition politicians have been have been treated, and um, 48 mayors from the um, from the HDDP were dismissed and replaced by my government appointed trustees, and six were prevented from taking their seats. So by now, 54 out of the 65 municipalities won by the HDP are no longer run by the mayor chosen by the voters and these mayors should be uh, reinstated. In June, three opposition members of parliament were stripped from their parliamentary immunity, which is essential to allow deputies to be able to express their views uh, in, in parliament. And by the end of September, arrest warrants were issued against 101 members of the HDP for their alleged involvement, involvement in the 2014 Kobani protest violence. Uh, and conditions to ensure fair elections are simply missing. 
uh, and this includes a free media uh, in the first place uh, and um, uh, the more generally freedoms of expression and thought continue to be an immense challenge uh, and and we 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 have discussed this with the, with the leader of the turkish uh, delegation we now expect the strategy for the reform of the justice system and the future human rights action plan to lead to meaningful progress um, we also expect the turkish authorities to show genuine political will to expand freedom of expression and assembly and indeed of media freedom cooperation and dialogue with the council of europe will be absolutely key to this and we strongly encourage the turkish authorities to seek the expertise of the council of europe another major concern for us is the functioning of the judicial system um, which is handling uh, a lot of cases and in recent months we, we have witnessed a new crackdown on lawyers uh, this is affecting the administration of of the justice system uh, arrested lawyers uh, felt forced to resort to hunger strikes to demand fair trials and unfortunately Ebru Timtik lost her life which was indeed quite shocking the amendments to the law on attorneyship of 1969 adopted this summer without proper consultation could lead to further politicization of the legal profession that's not my view that's the view of the Venice Commission and these these amendments should be further revealed or, or so, sorry, further revised or repealed. We also expect bar associations to be able to operate and to organize their general assemblies. Pre-trial detention is abusively used to stifle freedom of expression. And in two landmark cases, one uh, including the former head of the HDP, Mr. Demirtas, or the philanthropist, Osman Kavala, uh, the European Court of Human Rights has established that there was a violation of Article 18 of the Convention, and the the the, uh, the Court of Human Rights judgments have not been not been in, implemented, and Osman Kavalo is still behind bars, uh, and in our opinion, must be released. There, there is judicial harassment, uh, and and that has been uh, had a devastating effect on on civil society. And the new indictment accepted by the Turkish court against Mr. Kavala is really not acceptable. That there are allegations of torture and ill treatment. Uh, and in a country where the rule of law should prevail, it is worrying that rulings of the Turkish constitutional court are simply being disregarded by lower courts. And I refer here to the case of the deputy from the CHP, Mr. Berberoglu, who should have his parliamentary rights reinstated and should return to parliament. And we've also mentioned the long lasting effect of the state of emergency and, and subsequent legislation, in particular, the fate of thousands of dismissed civil servants who are condemned to, to what effectively amounts to a civilian form of death. I, I deeply regret that the possible reinstatement of the death penalty or the withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention uh, to prevent and combat violence against women and, and, and domestic violence are now issues that are being raised by the highest officials in the country, very senior officials, uh, and, and, and the backlash against this would be extremely damaging. Finally, this new crackdown on political opposition and civil dissent should be appreciated in the overall context. The constitutional amendments of 2017 and the presidential system have unfortunately weakened the separation of powers and checks and balances, not as foreseen by me, but as foreseen by the Venice Commission in 2017. But if I can conclude on a positive note, Turkey is a vivid democracy. It has a high turnout in elections, uh, a general attachment of the citizens to the democracy, and, and new political parties are, are emerging in, in what is an active civil society. There is a lively debate on key issues such as the parliamentary and the presidential systems. But unfortunately, basic conditions uh, like, like free media and fair trials are not being met. Now, we need to engage with Turkey and continue the frank dialogue. And, and I'm really grateful for the conversation that we had online with Mr. Yildiz uh, 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 last, last week or, or earlier this week. Uh, and, and we need more of that. We, we need to continue that. The monitoring process is not taking a big stick and wielding it, but, but having dialogue uh, to be able to get answers to serious questions that, that we have about the rule of law, democracy and human rights in a country. 
and, and this this can be better achieved by dialogue by genuine political will and commitment to achieve meaningful changes and i hope that the standing committee will support the draft resolution submitted by us and i thank you very much Mr. Howell, thanks very much for your presentation. And uh, now I ask uh, Mr. Hammerberg in, in the, on the line. He is not. That means that we go to the debate and I open the discussion, but in a way that when Mr. Hammerberg has the link to us, I will allow actually him to intervene for his presentation, actually whenever he feels that it's suitable. So let's go now to the uh, speakers list as and as typical we start with the political groups and the biggest group is the social socialist democrats and verts uh, verts greens frank schwabe the floor is yours vielen herzlichen dank ich will mich ganz herzlich bedanken bei den beiden uh, rapporteuren für diesen wichtigen Bericht und will nochmal deutlich machen, weil immer die Debatte geführt wird, sollen wir denn ähm, einen Report haben, während wir ein normales Monitoring haben? Ja, es ist leider immer wieder notwendig, auch solche Berichte zwischendurch zu haben, um die Staaten ähm, an ihre Pflichten zu erinnern und äh, das tun die beiden Rapporteure und deswegen herzlichen Dank für diesen wichtigen und hervorragenden Bericht. Leider ist es so, dass äh, auch der Bericht feststellen muss, dass die Regierung der Türkei die Regierung eines wunderbaren Landes weiterhin in die falsche Richtung steuert, in fast allen Indikatoren, über die wir jedenfalls zu reden haben im Rahmen des äh, Europarats. Es gibt aber auch Hoffnung. Es gibt die Hoffnung, dass trotz alledem in einer doch äh, ausdifferenzierten Zivilgesellschaft wir eben auch äh, äh, Diskussionen haben über die Zukunft des Landes und auch die Möglichkeit weiterhin besteht, für die Opposition, wie zum Beispiel bei den Lokalwahlen, erfolgreich ähm, zu sein. Das, was wir in den letzten Monaten gesehen haben, gibt äh, Anlass zu weiterer Besorgnis. Äh, die Angriffe auf die Opposition, insbesondere in den letzten Wochen auf die HDP, aber auch äh, auf die GHP, äh, das, was im Bereich der Rechtsanwälte an äh, Bedrängungen und Bedrohungen passiert, äh, die Unterdrückung äh, der Medien und das, was wir sozusagen an Rechtsstaat sehen bzw. nicht sehen, keine Unabhängigkeit, sondern politisch motivierte ähm, Urteile. Es gibt politische Gefangene. Ich selber habe die Patenschaft übernommen für Hosan Jane und Gönül Örs, zwei Deutsche, die in türkischer Haft saßen, jetzt das Land nicht verlassen dürfen, die dort zu Unrecht sind und deswegen sehr, sehr schnell das Land verlassen können müssen. Ich habe die Patenschaft übernommen für Örtegul Kürtschü, wo unser ehemaliger Kollege, der jetzt äh, Asylbewerber in Deutschland ist, der, der nicht mehr frei agieren kann, sich nicht frei bewegen kann in der Türkei. Die Türkei hat große Herausforderungen, gar keine Frage, durch den Konflikt in Syrien und große ökonomische Herausforderungen. Aber alles das lässt sich nicht lösen durch eine aggressive Außenpolitik und auch nicht durch eine Politik der Repression nach innen, sondern die Türkei, die türkische Regierung muss einen anderen Kurs einschlagen, das ist zentral. Und ich will das nochmal sagen, ich bin für Dialog, bis es eigentlich nicht mehr geht. Aber es gibt eine rote Linie. Und die rote Linie, und das muss die Türkei wissen, das muss die türkische Regierung wissen, ist die Umsetzung der Urteile des Europäischen Menschenrechtsgerichtshofes. Dort ist das Urteil im Fall Kavala gesprochen und das wird nicht umgesetzt. Wir haben eine ähnliche Situation im Fall Demirtas und wir haben weitere Urteile, die jetzt auf der, der Liste sind, weitere Fälle, die jetzt anhängig sind. Die Türkei muss diese Urteile umsetzen, ansonsten kann sie nicht Mitglied dieser Organisation sein. Ähm, Nochmal vielen Dank an die beiden Rapporteure für diesen wichtigen Bericht, den wir gleich so auch verabschieden sollten. Thanks, Frank. And, and the next one is... Uh... Representative from European People's Party, EPP, Ria Omen Ruiten. Are you Ria there? She is not there. Then we go to the next group, Alde group, and uh, Mrs. Alexander Louis. Miss, Mrs. Alexandra Louis, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> Chers collègues, 
Tout d'abord, je tiens à remercier nos deux co-rapporteurs pour la qualité de leur travail. Nous disons, je crois, dans ce rapport, une volonté de justesse et de vérité. Des avocats, des journalistes, des universitaires, des parlementaires et des militants de la société civile. Ils ont tous un point commun, ils sont les piliers d'un État de droit. Il n'est de pire signe dans une démocratie que de voir les droits de ces derniers attaqués. Notre Assemblée ne peut que s'inquiéter de la dégradation de l'État de droit et de la démocratie en Turquie. En tant que rapporteur général sur la situation des droits de l'homme, j'ai alerté à plusieurs reprises sur la détention des défenseurs des droits, d'avocats ou de militants en Turquie. Et je pense là notamment à la nouvelle arrestation en février dernier d'Osman Kavala et à la mort, il y a un peu plus d'un mois, de l'avocate Ebrutimtik dans une prison à Istanbul. Comme vous le savez, le Conseil de l'Europe n'est pas le seul à alerter sur la situation. Je pense notamment à la Cour européenne des droits de l'homme et comme l'ont rappelé mes collègues, dont les arrêts ne sont pas respectés. Il y a également de nombreuses ONG engagées dans la défense des droits humains qui, qui, euh, qui font état de toutes ces difficultés. L'affaiblissement de la séparation des pouvoirs, la levée de l'immunité des parlementaires d'opposition, la dégradation des conditions d'exercice des avocats, les restrictions dans la liberté d'expression, notamment pour les médias, L'utilisation aussi de la pandémie à des fins politiques, les pressions exercées sur les militants de la société civile, sur les médecins, empêchent très clairement le maintien de la démocratie telle que nous la défendons ici. À ces restrictions, intimidations, détentions, il faut ajouter des atteintes manifestes et directes aux principes de notre institution, et je pense là aux élections annulées dans des conditions plus que contestables. Je pense aussi à la réflexion menée par les autorités turques sur une possible réintroduction de la peine de mort. Là, je rappelle que l'interdiction de la peine de mort relève du droit absolu à la vie, qui est défendu par la Cour européenne des droits de l'homme, par la Convention, et elle n'est donc pas négociable. Et je voudrais rappeler les mots justes de Robert Baninter, qui avait été prononcé en 1980 à l'Assemblée nationale française. « La vraie signification politique de la peine de mort, c'est bien qu'elle procède de l'idée que l'État a le droit de disposer du citoyen jusqu'à lui retirer la vie. C'est par là même que la peine de mort s'inscrit dans le système totalitaire. » Je pense enfin aux lourds soupçons de pratiques de torture sur certains opposants au pouvoir. À la lecture de ce rapport, il est crucial que la Turquie reconsidère pardon, un certain nombre de ses positions, au besoin en s'appuyant sur les travaux du Conseil de l'Europe, notamment sur ceux de la Commission de suivi, afin de progresser vers plus de démocratie. Cela a été dit, la Turquie est une richesse, c'est sa société civile. Et je crois que si elle veut progresser dans le respect des principes du Conseil de l'Europe, c'est bien sur cette société qu'il faut s'appuyer. Nous soutenons donc ce rapport et je tiens encore à remercier chaleureusement les deux co-rapporteurs, vraiment pour la justesse de ce travail, évidemment loin d'être facile. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, Alexandra. Et le prochain est le European Conservative Group, Sir Roger de Gale, s'il vous plaît. Good morning, President, and thank you very much indeed. Um, and my thanks also to John Howell and to Tom Hammerberg for the report that they have produced. I'm sorry that Tom isn't with us this morning. His contributions are always valued, and I hope that he'll be able to join us and give us the benefit of his opinion later. But can I congratulate John on his presentation, and my parliamentary colleague, of course, uh, for a very measured response to a very serious situation. There are, as we know, um, two rogue states within the Council of Europe, uh, the Russian Federation um, and uh, Turkey. Uh, Turkey has occupied part of the land of a member state for getting on for 50 years. I'm talking about the island of Cyprus, of course. So Turkey has previous and has been suspended in the past from membership. But nobody wants to see that happen again if it can be avoided, but I think it is a big if. Um, John Howell has rightly said that the way forward should be dialogue, as indeed it should be with Russia. But dialogue has to be two-sided. Uh, a dialogue with the deaf is not a dialogue. The human rights record, the current and recent human rights record in Turkey is quite appalling. People uh, are in prison without trial. The judiciary has been decimated, academics have been imprisoned, journalists have been imprisoned. And while it is absolutely correct that at ground level there is a passionate interest 
in the democratic process and participation in the political process that is not reflected in what is a de facto dictatorship. Um, uh, John Howell referred to uh, democracy, but democracy as we know it within the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe really doesn't exist in Turkey today. So I'm afraid that while I share John's view that dialogue is the way forward, there also has to be a sanction. And I therefore endorse and agree with the sentiments expressed by Frank Schwaber in his closing remarks. We will continue dialogue. We will stress the need for uh, compliance with the, European, the, the judgments of the European Court of Human Rights and with proper democracy and freedom of speech. But if those are not forthcoming, then I'm afraid I have to say that I do not believe that Turkey like the Russian Federation, can any longer remain a member of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. It is that stark and that important, and that message has to be sent out from the Standing Committee and indeed from the whole Assembly. We have reached the point where we cannot any longer tolerate these abuses. Thank you. Thanks very much, Roger. Now we have the United European Left Group. Tini Cox, please. The floor is yours. Mr. President, and uh, thanks once again to the Standing Committee for allowing uh, uh, to have this uh, uh, this urgent debate at the uh, at request of my group, the Unified European Left uh, Group. Uh, and thanks uh, to our two co-rapporteurs for their most accurate and most critical report on the recent crackdown uh, on uh, the opposition in and uh, uh, the civil society in uh, in Turkey. Um, people may question how it is possible to draft a, a such um, precise uh, resolution uh, and uh, a memorandum on what is happening in Turkey. It is, of course, Mr. President, because of the fact that we are monitoring Turkey very closely and we are monitoring it very closely at the request of the Parliamentary Assembly because of the long range of abuses of obligations that uh, Turkey has taken upon itself voluntarily when acceding to uh, the Council of Europe. Now, 70 years ago, uh, we were so worried that we had to put uh, Turkey back into uh, the monitoring procedure. We did not do that to punish the country. We did do it to help its citizens because we have to remember, especially also in this debate, that we are having this debate because we are worried about the situation of the citizens of this big member state of the Council of Europe. We have to be aware that while the Turkish authorities misbehave in a, in a very large scale, uh, abuse their uh, obligations uh, under the Convention on Human Rights, the citizens of Turkey are the ones who are suffering. The citizens of Turkey are not able to freely express their opinion. The, the citizens of Turkey are not able to protest against authoritarian rule in uh, Turkey. The citizens in Turkey have elected politicians who are now uh, behind bars, especially from the HDP party, the party that is represented in my group, but also of the CHP. Lawyers are being harassed. Uh, journalists cannot do their work. Academics are uh, treated in a very bad way. This is happening and this is done to the citizens of Turkey. So. Therefore, I want to thank the rapporteurs that they made it so clear where Turkey is not uh, 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 working uh, in line with its own obligations and that it becomes clear that these are the Turkish authorities who are doing it. This is not the Turkish citizens uh, uh, with monitoring the situation in uh, this big member state of the Council of Europe. We make clear that we are on the side of the citizens of Turkey. They need to be protected. They need to be guaranteed their fundamental rights. And I agree with the other speakers that we have to warn the Turkish authorities. This is not for free. You cannot harass your own obligations. You cannot harass your own citizens without any consequences. Thanks again for the uh, rapporteurs for doing this great job. And I hope that resolution will be support, get the support of the large majority of the standing committee. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tini. 
Now we are at the end of the round of presentations coming from the groups, and I will check is Mr. Hammerberg now there as an co rapporteur? No, he is not. That means that we will go now to the speakers list, and we have quite good debate. We will have good debate. I can already see now the list of the speakers. Mr. Yildiz Yild from Turkey is the first one, please. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Greetings from Ankara. As I mentioned in the monitoring committee meeting, I find it unreasonable and not necessary to produce reports on Turkey every year, while the monitoring report is under preparation. However, I acknowledge that the deliberation of the different aspects of the report can suggest some basis for future cooperation, dialogue, thus I noted the criticisms put forward in the report by the reporters, even though I cannot agree with many of them. I welcome these positive comments mentioned in the report and for in the presentations for Turkish society and for the cooperation between Turkey and the Council of Europe. I deem it important to emphasize that Turkey's commitment to promote human rights and fundamental freedoms through a reform agenda remains still unabated. The judicial reform strategy and human rights action plan, which the report refers are steps taken towards this end. The main goal of these initiatives is to reorganize the Turkish judicial system and to amend the relevant laws in order to promote the effective protection of fundamental freedoms in line with standards of the Council of Europe. This reform process is more than a lip service, given that it has already resulted in certain progress and concrete results. The legislative amendment packages were adopted pursuant to the judicial reform strategy. One of the tangible results of the reform is the amendment of the anti-terror law to reassure that statements within the limits of providing information or made with the purpose of criticism cannot be criminalized. This was made to put this legislation in line with the EU criteria. The government has also sought active participation of civil society political opposition and international organizations while drafting and implementing the reforms. Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, although some criticisms in the report may be valid, but the, in the entirety, the report does not reflect the situation in Turkey. That's why I tabled many amendments in the committee monitoring committee meeting. Most of them are not accepted. But I tabled here three amendments. I hope reporters will agree and the committee will approve it. Secondly, Mr. Chairman, I, I am trying to understand the criticism and to address, to explain, but I cannot tolerate the hostile, hostile statements by Mr. Gay. Turkey is a democracy. I, I advise him to listen to his government, to get briefing, on who is responsible from starting Cyprus problem and who fed the second two, two second rounds of negotiations. His remarks on Turkey is very excessive and un unacceptable. Secondly, putting this debate in Turkey on death penalty and Istanbul Convention is unfair. It is kind of at the level of political rhetoric. Even myself, as member of the government party, I openly declared I am against death penalty and I am for the convention. I mean, it is unlikely in the near future to get yeah, there. Yeah, unfortunately, the time already passed, so please try to summarize it now. Quickly. Yes, yes, yes. The, on these two issues, it is a political debate now. Everyone in my government party it is not decided as, as in my case, I will not vote for that penalty. So bringing it uh, continuously as a basis for criticism is not valid. Thank you very much.
Thanks very Thank much, Dennis. I understand you have lots of to say, and you will have lots of opportunities later on to, to defend the argument and what you wanted to say. Now I heard that Mr. Hammerberg is there, so so what so good? I'm doing that. Please take the make the request because otherwise we cannot open it. Is it happening? No. No, 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 Mr. Hammerbeck, you are there. We understood, uh, but 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 you should ask to speak, request to speak, speech. All right, all right. Technical problems. That exactly is the issue when we are in distance. It would be so nice to be. You are here, and then we could have a debate straight away. Let's move on on the speakers list. And uh, Mr. Hammerbeck, I will allow you to come whenever the connection is. He's now connected. Super. Okay. Floor is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweden is far away. Finland is even further. But I am here. That's why, Mr. Hammerberg, you should come here. <laughs> Is it really so that we cannot create a connection? Seems to be so. Okay, let's have the next one, and, and obviously I will take Mr. Hammerberg when he... he Mr. Kairid is from Greece, the neighboring country for Turkey, please. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Yes, hi. Hi. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for giving me the floor. Um, and good morning from Athens, Greece. Yes, I come from a country uh, that has been uh, very supportive of uh, Turkey's uh, democratization and the rapprochement with Europe. I don't think there has been uh, any other country more supportive of uh, uh, Turkey approaching uh, Europe than Greece since the Helsinki summit in your country uh, 21 years ago in 1999. That's why we are extremely concerned uh, about the turn of events and the de-democratization, de-democratization and democratization process that has been going on in Turkey for the last uh, years, especially since 2013 Gezi Park demonstrations and the 2016 failed coup uh, in Turkey. Turkey might be a democracy, as our uh, colleague from Turkey has just mentioned, but it must be a very strange democracy uh, where elected officials go to jail, hundreds of journalists are in jail, and uh, thousands of civil servants and others are in jail without you. Uh, process. Uh, and we are very concerned about this for, uh, in particular, two reasons. Uh, A, because uh, this tend to authoritarianism uh, domestically is uh, linked to an increase in uh, aggression uh, externally. Um, and the examples are very many recently against Armenia in the Caucasus, uh, Greece in the Mediterranean in the Aegean, in Cyprus, against the Turks in Syria and Iraq, and so on and so forth. So aggression is not uh, limited uh, against Turkish citizens, but unfortunately it expands and goes beyond Turkey's border alone, uh, uh, abroad. And the link between uh, authoritarianism inside and uh, aggression and uh, uh, revisionism outside is very stark. The second reason of uh, uh, particular concern is that this authoritarianism doesn't stay at home, but it is exported abroad. We have recently had elections in the occupied so-called northern um, um, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, in uh, Cyprus, where we had uh, an extreme and uh, overt uh, um, interference of the Turkish regime in favor of the uh, new elected uh, uh, so-called president of of, uh, uh, the Turkish Cypriots there against the incumbent, Mr. Akinzi, uh, with uh, threats and all sorts of other uh, instruments as they have been documented and uh, uh, made public by Akinzi and the uh, others within 
uh, uh, Turkey, uh, Turkey, Cyprus. So for all these reasons, we are very uh, uh, rightly concerned. I salute my British colleagues' uh, uh, comments uh, on uh, the ragness of Turkey. I try to be more limited and constrained being a neighbor and uh, coming from a country that had been so supportive in the past. Thank you. Mr. Kairis, thank you very much. And we are still in the Southeast uh, Europe. Uh, next one is from Armenia, Mr. Iki Tayan, please. Um, you know, uh, hello, hello. Continue, Miki, can we can hear you? Uh, you know, when uh, somebody from Armenia speaking about Turkey, People say, no, they are not neutral. They are interested country. Yes, we are very, very interested country. We are interested uh, uh, to have Turkey like neighbor country as a democratic country. Because, you know, Turkey became danger, not only for own citizens, uh, but also for other citizens, in also not only for uh, directly members. Uh, you, you know, I trust uh, reporters. I trust Mr. Hammerberg. I trust uh, uh, Mr. Howell. I, I trust George um, uh, Fuchs, uh, who uh, made a very good uh, report about uh, situation with journalists, mass media in Turkey uh, two years ago, last year also. Uh, can you imagine? Just put uh, attention to figures. 150 mass media outlets were closed in Turkey. 10,000 uh, employees of mass media were uh, dismissed. More than 300 journalists um, uh, uh, are in the prison. One journalist and member of parliament was accused only because he said information that Turkey maybe will enter uh, um, uh, enter to Syria. Other journalist, uh, Jan Dandar, uh, was accused because he said about uh, arms with Turkey sent outside. Um, <laughs> listen, I really tried to find any positive point in this report. I didn't find. One positive uh, thing, uh, thing uh, Mr. Howell says, he said that maybe uh, civil society will develop in, in, in Turkey. No, it's impossible. If you don't have free media, it will be no um, uh, civil society there. Um, you know, we, all, we always criticized uh, Belarus and other country, for example, for death penalty. There is no death penalty legally in Turkey. But they are killing people other using other way. For example, journalist Armenian origin, uh, um, Randin, was killed because he is Armenian and because he is journalist. Uh, really, uh, I think uh, we use you know immediately all things immediately stop immediately stop uh, calling Turkey. But how we can stop Turkey? I think we need to give some terms. If not, the, if Turkey will not. Um, um, uh, respect this uh, term for for changing. We need to stop uh, Turkey's uh, Turkish membership even in the Council of Europe because Turkey already proved that uh, Turkey cannot be member of Council of Europe if they will not change all uh, uh, commitments um, mentioned in this report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kidayan. Now we move out from. Southeast Europe to northern, close to me, my country. Next one is from Norway, Mrs. Show, please. The floor is yours. Seems that Norway and Sweden are out of the Europe today. It's difficult to create connections, is it so? It's better that we know it comes here and down, down to Strasbourg to have a debate. Let's move, uh, Mrs. Show. You will have the obviously the floor when, when you are. Is, is it still out? Out, unfortunately. Oh, Sweden and Norway. <laughs> now we move to the Central Europe. Mr. Uh, Mr. Schenach from Austria, please.
takes a bit time to connect, but he's coming, I understood. Thank you, Mr. President. Hi, Kimo. You see, Middle Europe is maybe easier connected uh, with uh, Strasbourg. Um, uh, first, I want to thank both rapporteurs and the Secretariat of the Monitoring Committee uh, for this uh, great report in such a short time. And uh, in the monitoring, uh, we voted nearly unanimously for that, and uh, and we reject uh, a lot of amendments from uh, the Turkish delegate. But um, I noted that Mr. Head of the delegation was not totally against. So uh, I want also to say this in respect to Mr. Yildiz. But uh, the the need of this debate is uh, really necessary because uh, we have so many journalists in prison, uh, uh, people from the academic sides, advocates, uh, this is not accept acceptable. Uh, some weeks ago I spoke in the Council of Ministers as a rapporteur for media freedom and I underlined that there is no, there are only three countries in the world with such enormous uh, uh, journalists in prison and um, in, in, in Europe uh, uh, on the top uh, is uh, Turkey. And, uh, and uh, I was also, I've, and there is a red line. The red line is there are mayors elected, there are members of the parliaments elected and nobody has the right to send parliamentarians in prison and to suspend elected mayors. I also visit one of those mayors who is in house arrest and he's a gentleman. And, uh, and this is uh, a, a measure which in treats we can not ac accept. It's a climate of repression. And it was the right decision of the monitoring committee and of the plenary uh, when we pushed back uh, the post-monitoring of Turkey uh, into monitoring. And, uh, and there are some provocations uh, we discussed also in other committees, like in the Culture Committee, about the changing of the status of Hagia Sophia. And uh, in totally, I'm, I'm not the person who said we have to push out uh, Turkey. Uh, but we must help Turkey to come back on the way of rules of law, of democracy, and to, to respect human rights. And in this dialogue and in this monitoring dialogue, we should go on. Thank you very much. Now let's go once again, try if the connections to Northern Europe is valid. Madam Show, Mrs. Show from Norway, now please, the floor is yours. Thank you, then it's functioning. Uh, good, and thank you, um, President. Uh, I think this is a timely and important discussion. Uh, I commend uh, Tiny, Tiny Cox for having proposed it and congratulate our rapporteurs on a comprehensive and good report prepared in, the, in, a, in a short time. Uh, and I encourage you all to support this important resolution so that we again can send a message to the Turkish authorities. Basic human rights, such as the freedom of expression and freedom of assembly and asso association, must be uh, respected. Uh, our last discussion on Turkey, based on a report from the Monitoring Committee, was in January 2019. The topic was the worsening situation of opposition politicians in Turkey, and now we are discussing it again, this time urgently. In 2017, we decided to reopen the monitoring procedure. I very much regret the lack of progress in the treatment of political opposition and civil society, and I would actually say that we are witnessing regression. Turkey, equally with all members of the Council of Europe, is party to the European Convention on Human Rights, 
Turkey should be equally committed to adhere to it. The freedom of speech and freedom of assembly and association are being limited in Turkey. Critics of the government are being investigated and arrested. As follow member states of the Com Council of Europe, we must speak out against this. We cannot sit in silence and watch colleagues from Turkey, regardless of their party affili affili affiliation, being silenced by the authorities. These issues were raised by Norway in the UN Human Rights Hearing of Turkey in January. It will be raised again in the UN, in the OSCE, here in the Council of Europe and on other arena, arenas. And we owe it to Turkey and um, we owe it to the many members of the opposition and civil society who have had their rights violated. I would like to highlight one, of, one sentence from paragraph 8 of the draft resolution. The assembly remains confident of the ability of the Turkish people and authorities to address and redress the def deficiencies in the field of democracy, human rights and rule of law, provided there is a strong and genuine political will to do so. In my opinion, this is a very important sen sentence. This resolution and our monitoring on Turkey is not because we are against Turkey. We are all in this organization together and we share all values and the belief in democracy. I wished in Turkey well. I am confident that where, where there is political will, there is also uh, a way. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, Ingrid. I must have had luck to get connected to you. Uh, now we go to the country in concern. Two presentations or comments from Turkey. First, Mr. Otto, please. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to also express, excuse me, let me take this to the floor so that there is no voice bouncing back. So um, thanks to the reporters as well who put together a, a very good report. It is short. It shows actually the situation, a part of the situation, I would say. I mean, and we are expecting the more comprehensive report of the monitoring committee, which should include more details. Uh, we support uh, the resolution, of course, as the opposition in Turkey. But today, I would like to share with you the stories of two single persons, I think, which would show what is happening really in the very concrete, outside the kind of paragraphs and sentences and numbers we refer to. Hülya Alökmen Uyanık, who was a nurse, she lost her job in 2017. And Zeyat Ceylan, a teacher for 20 years, he also lost his job in 2017 with government decrees. One day they woke up and they just saw their names in the list added to some government decree, some ridiculous emergency rule decree. One nurse, one teacher with their families and children so vulnerable. Then they joined the HDP in 2019 as candidates for the local elections in the Arbakır and the Balar district of the Arbakır. Both of them, they were elected actually. Miss Hülya Alökmen, she received around 65% of the vote. And, and Mr. Zeyat Ceylan, he, re he received 72% of the vote in Balar. Guess what happened? Both of them were denied their election certificates simply because they had previously been dismissed from their jobs by a government decree. So they couldn't serve. This issue was also studied and condemned by the Venice Commission, who actually asked their reinstatement. Then what happened? Three months later, then they were elected as the co-chairs of HDP, my party's local organization in the Arbakır. I represent the province of the Arbakır as a member of parliament since 2018. So they are my co-chairs in my hometown here. Guess what happened? Yesterday, the police raided our headquarters in the Arbakır, 
And both of them are now in, a, in the anti-terror department of the police station here in the Arbaka. Okay. So if you look into the lives, the stories of these three people, three years, three grave violations. First, dismissed from their jobs with a government decree, without any compensation, without any rights. They're jobless. Then they get elected as the mayors of Diyarbakir, which is the biggest town here, and Baglar, the biggest district in Diyarbakir, with like 65, 72% of the vote. Both of them are denied their election certificates. Then they become co-chairs of my party, elected, and now they are in police station, and I, we expect they will be arrested in two, three days. So I am finishing right now. I know I'm taking time. I'm so sorry. And then we listen to the government saying that they are fighting terrorism. We simply ask everybody not to take seriously the allegations related to uh, terror char charges. This is the situation in Turkey. We are for a constructive dialogue between the U Council of Europe and Turkey. But the Turkish government should not dismiss these reports and these ideas, but take a... Uh, uh, take some responsibility, should assume some responsibility. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Osoy. Now, also, a uh, comment from Turkey, uh, Mrs. Uka. Uca. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrte Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich grüße Sie alle recht herzlich und ich möchte mich zunächst bei unseren Berichterstattern dafür danken, dass Sie den äußerst äh, wichtigen Bericht in solch einem Zeitraum erstellt haben, die in der Zeit zunehmende anhaltende repressive Politik Mr. schadet Ucha. sowohl der Rechtsstaatlichkeit... Sorry, sorry, Mr. Ucha. Yes, okay. watch it. Please, could you move your language selector to floor? Ja, ich auch... Your language selector to okay. floor, please. They can translate it. It's not translated. Okay. Uh, ich fand you can start once an again your presentation. You can start once again your presentation. We lost the, the beginning, so we will start from the beginning. Okay, Please. okay thank you. Uh, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrte Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich grüße Sie alle recht herzlich. Uh, zunächst möchte ich mich bei den Berichterstattern dafür danken, dass Sie den äußerst wichtigsten Bericht in solch einem Zeitraum erstellt haben, die in der letzten Zeit zunehmende anhaltende uh, repressive Politik schadet sowohl der Rechtsstaatlichkeit als auch der Meinungsfreiheit. Die türkische Regierung verhaftet Oppositionelle unter dem Vorwand der Terrorismusbekämpfung, unter anderem mit Gesetzen wie die Beleidigung der türkischen Nation, des Staates, der türkischen Republik. Präsidentenbeleidigung sowie mit vielen anderen rechtswidrigen Entscheidungen, die die Regierung fühlt sich keinem internationalen Abkommen gegenüber verpflichtet und setzt die Justiz als Waffe ein. Die Türkei besteht auf ohnehin bestehenden letzten Platz bezüglich der Verletzung der Meinungsfreiheit und ist entschlossen, seinen Platz in der Rangliste zu behalten. Durch die zunehmende Repression gegenüber der HDP tritt die Regierung der Rechtsgrundsätze mit Füßen und ignoriert den Willen des Volkes. Die HDP hatte ursprünglich 65 Gemeinden, davon sind nur noch sechs übrig geblieben. Den Gemeinden wurden Zwangsverwalter ernannt und diejenigen, die demokratisch gewählt worden sind, wurden inhaftiert. Die Justiz der Regierung, die den Willen des kurdischen Volkes an sich gerissen hat, tritt weiterhin skandalöse Entscheidungen für viele unserer inhaftierten Abgeordneten, insbesondere für unsere ehemalige Co-Vorsitzenden, wurden weitere Haftbefehle erlassen. Es ist auch klar, dass der Rechts Rechtsskandal ein rein politisch ist. Während der Druck gegen die HDP anhält, befindet sich Herr Abdullah Öcalan weiterhin in schweren Isolationsbedingungen in Inselgefängnis. Ihm ist ein sechsmonatiges Telefonverbot verhängt worden, welches er nur einmal in 21 Jahren nutzen konnte. Der letzte Anwaltsbesuch bei Abdullah Öcalan war, hatte am 7. August 2019 stattgefunden. In dem Bericht von CPT wurde darauf hingewiesen, dass Abdullah Öcalan sich in einem Foltersystem befindet. Der Angriff auf Kobane durch den IS im Jahre 2014 hat sowohl in der Türkei als auch weltweit zu Protesten geführt. Gegenüber friedlichen Protesten hat der türkische Präsident Erklärungen wie Kobane ist dabei zu fallen abgegeben. Daraufhin kamen jedoch leider 46 unsere Bürger durch die bewaffneten Interventionen von türkischen Sicherheitskräften ums Leben. Diejenigen, die diese Todesfälle verursacht hatten, wurden jedoch nicht vor Gericht gestellt. Es wurde eine Operation gegen die HDP durchgeführt, bei der die HDP immer wieder gefordert hatte, dass die Ereignisse untersucht, die Ereignisse untersucht werden sollten. 
17 unserer Parteifreunde wurden festgenommen. Trotz den Verurteilungen des Europarates und des Europäischen Parlaments sowie in vielen Staaten instrumentalisiert die türkische Regierung die Justiz weiterhin für ihre Politik. Das größte Hindernis, Hindernis für, für eine in der Türkei begründete freiheitliche und demokratische Gesellschaft, in der von der Unabhängigkeit der Justiz geführte politische Macht wird zerstört. Wir, die HDP, wollen in der Türkei die wahre Demokratie und wir werden mit allen demokratischen Mitteln sowie mit den Grundsätzen des Justizrechts und mit voller Kraft weiterhin kämpfen. Gemeinsam können wir diese Politik der Unterdrückung und Gewalt ändern. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. They are in row actually for other Turkish presentations, but they will be in between neighboring country, Greece. Uh, Dora Bagoyanis, the floor is yours. Unfortunately, we lost the connections to Greece. Uh, let's continue. We still have several Turkish, uh, nice to actually hear, and important to hear. So let's move that list further, and Dora will get her presentation so soon as she is, is available. Now is it Mr. Altunjaldic uh -huh. from Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I I'm sorry to uh, to say that, uh, but uh, I have to uh, raise the issue that Mr. Gale has made his speech with prejudice and unfortunately manipulated the issues. which is inappropriate and untrue. Who is the one who must have known what happened to Turkish Sabris in 1974 when Turkey was forced to intervene the situation as a guaranteeing party? Yes, he is right. Dialogue necessitates two parties. But he is wrong, unfortunately. Turkey is the one who has been strictly seeking dialogue for years on the issues on the table. The situation is just opposite of what Mr. Gay said on Cyprus issue. Greece and Southern Cyprus are the one who have been shy away from the negotiating table. And again, they have done away from UN resolution as well. I think the opinion of raising the colleagues should be something which uh, has to be, which has to be um, true and, and uh, reasonable. And also coming from the facts and instead of coming from uh, his prejudice. Let me say that, despite the fact that there are always issues from all around the world on human rights issues. Turkey has always tried to have particular attention to human rights and fundamental freedoms. There have been continuous studies in Turkey to advance our democracy to a higher level of as a top priority in our agenda. Of course, like all other countries, there could have been some problems, but we have been trying to solve all the problems within this stage. Let me just also rephrase uh, uh, the, uh, the things that, that have been, again, uh, said by Armenian delegation. In my, in my opinion, Armenian delegate tell us about the hand rank is totally wrong and one-sided and unreasonable and untrue. 
I would like to say that whoever responsible of the loss of run rate were brought up to the in front of the court and punished by the court as well. As you all know, a member of our parliament of our party, Mr. Mark Essayan, passed away a few weeks ago. That and means. yesterday, President Erdogan and I'm, 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 I'm concluding, and other dignitaries were among the, among the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the one who attended the funeral of, funeral of um, Essayan, Mr. Essayan. And therefore, I strongly disagree with, with the thought that citizens of other nationalities living in our country in, uh, in, in danger. This is totally wrong. And everyone is, is treating as equal as very much Turkish in Turkey. Turkey is ruling up of the rule of law and yeah, human sorry. rights. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry because there are certain time limits and the speaker's list is quite a long. There are still several speakers also from Turkey. So, so in that way, that way we can hear good arguments further on. Now, I heard that Mr. Hammerberg is, is there. Uh, so I allow now the other co-rapporteur to react. So, so please, what's so good? Mr. Hammerberg, I recommend you move to Finland. We do have better connections to, to, to the world than you in Sweden. Sorry to say so bluntly. We have tried to do so many times already. No. Uh, Mr. How, okay. Madam Dora, Dora Bakoyanis, you are there. You can obviously have flow now, please. Good morning, Chair. Good morning from Crete. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, um, after the Helsinki Agreement, uh, Greece was one of the most uh, firm supporters of the democratization of Turkey. As every neighbor country, Armenia, Bulgaria, Greece, we were most interested to have on our borders a democratic Turkey, because a democratic Turkey is a strong Turkey, a European-minded Turkey with the European values in place. This was very important also for the good neighborship relations. Now I wanted to start by reminding our Parliamentary Assembly Resolution 2206 on the worsening situation of opposition politicians in Turkey. One voted back on January 24th, 2019. A year and a half after that, we found ourselves again in the same place our concerns are validated and the need to once again to ring the bell on Turkey's crackdown on human rights, rule of law and democratic process is urgent. I want to raise my voice along with that of Sergei and my colleague Mr. Keridis and others, calling out the conscious choice of Turkey to distance itself from democratic values and the rule of law. My dear colleagues, Mr. Gildiz from Turkey claims there is a reform happening right now in Turkey. When elected opposition politicians end up in jail, when lawyers die of hunger strike because they don't get a fair trial, when human rights activists are threatened, there is not a reform. This is a crackdown that is authoritarianism. That is the situation today in Turkey. This is what must be acknowledged, what must be named and addressed. And to underline all the above attitude and truly cast away any shadow of doubt about how some members of this council are viewing today the values of human rights and democracy, Turkey and Poland are, starting their, are stating their intention of withdrawing from the Istanbul Convention. This council and this assembly cannot be a cover for some member states who claim publicly the spotlight in democracy, but turn away and disregard democratic values and principles in their shadows. I want to, conclu to conclude my stating my support for the draft resolution and point out this. Yesterday, President Deems characterized this year 
as a lost year in many ways due to the pandemic and the effect it had on our ways of working. We must not allow our credibility to be lost as well. We celebrate 70 years from the signing of the European Convention of Human Rights. This cannot be the year that the Council and this Assembly allowed Member States to bluntly derogate from the very values we are mandated to protect. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I should indicate a little bit about the time because the speaker is still quite long. Uh, Dora, thanks for your presentation. You will have now, you listen now, your next door, next door neighbor and your friend Akif Kilic, please, Kachi. Akif, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, good morning from Istanbul. Um, I have a speech prepared. I had some points prepared, but after listening to some of our colleagues, I'm not going to stick with that. I'm going to speak about something else. And by the way, I have uh, been able with God's will to defeat COVID-19. So I have no antibodies. Uh, I can help out anybody who has H -A 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 -H positive blood. I can give you an antibodies. So it was not a very good experience. Um, it is obvious that we are not talking about the report here. We are not talking about the points in the report. We're talking about something else. We're talking about an attitude and an understanding uh, to, towards Turkey. And I think when some of our colleagues mention we have no problem with Turkey, they're actually trying to say we have a problem with the president of Turkey. And just say this openly. Just say openly that you have a problem with Recep Tayyip Erdogan. He's the person who started all the negotiation processes with the EU. And it was Sarkozy of France who blocked Turkey in 2010 and 11 from having a fair and uh, rightful negotiation with the European Union. Everybody is keeping forgetting that. And just recently, the French President Macron and his interior minister are spreading Islamophobic words, not Islamophobic, hate of Islam, okay? Speaking about uh, closing down mosques, uh, not allowing people to assemble. These are things that are happening within the Council of Europe member states. Just last night, unfortunately, Mr. Schwabe in Germany, in Berlin, a mosque was raided by police while people were praying inside. I suggest you also go and check what's happening there with their human rights. And I'm not going to even try to explain things that are mentioned in the report because I know they will be, again, the same words and coming and forward and back. And when we're speaking about freedom of speech, having a debate about the death penalty is something else. Do you want us to ban people from speaking? Do you want us to say you can speak with this or that? I don't know. Maybe that's what you want. And when we come back to Mr. Roger Gale, it is appalling, appalling the words you are using. Turkey is a democracy. Turkey is a country that is on the track of becoming more stronger than ever it was. And in 1974, you were a journalist, I think. Look what happens on the island of Cyprus with the Turkish minority there with the Turkish Cypriots. And to my Greek friends, you're saying, well, there is a new election, the so-called Northern Cyprus, the uh, Republic of Turkey, the, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. It's not a so-called, it's there. And they had an election and they have a new president. We live with that. And all these words that are coming out and all these things, and to, to our Armenian colleagues, bringing up Hiran Tink, you should look into YouTube what Hiran Tink was saying about this country, about Turkey. There might be some politicians in Turkey who are listening to you or like what you're saying, but know this. Yesterday, the president of Turkey was in the funeral service of one hour late deceased Armenian members of parliament in an Armenian church in Turkey. I would like to see uh, how many mosques are open in Greece that is giving out so many democratic values. I know I've overcome the time, but I'm, I'm, I'm uh, coming to the end, Kimo. Thank you very much. And I know that uh, in the future, I hope uh, we will have more open discussions rather than one-sided discussions. Thank you. Thanks. For Thanks. Uh, now, Mr. Eker from Turkey also. Are you there, man? Thank you, Chef. Uh, Turkey is one of the oldest members of European Council from time to time, we face some problems. In such cases, we need to have better relations, better dialogue to overcome these issues. 
If the aim is to implement the European Council values, democracy, human rights, etc., then EC platforms should not be allowed to be used as a platform of hostility against Turkey. Criticism is very much different from the hostility. Having said that, I must say, in the face of severe terrorist threat, threats and the harsh realities of the failed coup attempts, Turkey was faced with new challenges with regard to protection of freedom of expression and some other issues. But Turkey resolutely maintains its commitment to the principles of the independent judiciary and the rule of law, even under severe threats from various terrorist organizations. It is not so simple. We pay a very high cost. We lost more than 50,000 peop uh, innocent people of our citizens to uh, I mean, in fighting against, in fighting against uh, terrorism. Now, another issue is that the ad advancing Turkey's democracy to a higher level has always been a top priority in our agenda. Reform Action Group, which convened under the chairmanship of our president on 9 May 2019, reaffirmed the strong political will to revitalize the reform process. Particular attention is given to the areas of judiciary and fundamental rights and freedoms. New judicial reform strategy made public on was made public on 20 May 2019. While drafting this strategy, standards and norms at the Council of Europe, United Nations and European Union were taken into account. The judiciary will become more efficient through this new strategy. Three legislative amendment packages were adopted person to the JRRs. Now, what we should do is to have a better dialogue and not to use a hostile language against Turkey if we get really need to help the people of uh, Turkey. Thank you. Thanks, Mehmet. And we will continue with Turkish uh, presentations. Mrs. Kunay, please. Hello? Yes, yes, you can hear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for giving the floor for a very important report for Turkey. I would like to thank Mrs. Gunay. Mrs. Gunay, please, please. Could yeah. you please check whether your language selector has been put to floor? Please. Yeah, it's singing. Your language selector to floor. Thank you. Ah, floor. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank the reporters for their effort, but sadly, it is not an accurate report reflecting the real picture of Turkey. There may be some areas to develop. Uh, however, the situation is much different than it is reflected. There are some arguments that we cannot agree. I believe this emanates from the fact that the reporters couldn't realize a fact-finding visit to Turkey due to pandemic and couldn't have an opportunity to get in touch with the authorities, stakeholders from different uh, perspectives. In a way, this report is biased based on the documents that are provided to the reporters. Four points I would like to highlight and as a parliamentarian demand for deep, deeper investigation. First of all, at all PACE meetings, we have talked about Turkey's, Turkey's external actions. Just to conclude, Turkey is exercising its rights based on international law 
and UN resolutions. There, secondly, there is an unfair claim about lifting the immunity of 154 parliamentarians in 2016. The immunity of these parliament um, MPs from all political parties represented in the parliament was lifted, yes, but they are all from different parties. And the main opposition party, Republican People Party, supported the immunity lifting bill, bill at the parliament. So it's not a one-sided lifting. Recently, a group of parliaments is working on a revision of election legislation, which includes lowering the 10% electoral threshold. Four, Turkey has zero tolerance to any type of terrorist activities and groups. Turkey is determined to stand with its territorial integrity and sovereign rights. In this context, as some members of PACE mentioned, Turkey is not occupying any foreign land. Turkey is defending its rights. What France and some other European countries, including some other countries like US, doing in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, or Eastern Mediterranean? This is intervention or occupation. Very simply, the focus is on the dismissal of mayors recently in Turkey. It is be this is because of their terrorism-related charges. Nobody talked about the uh, dismissal of mayors and ministers in Spain due to their pro-Catalan activities, which they call as a rebellion or terrorism charges. Mr. Cox, don't worry. Turkish citizens can protect themselves based on their own will through democratic elections. Nobody can intervene Turkey's internal affairs. Madam, say of time. Let's be clear about this fact. And just, uh, I would like to highlight something. Just think about an unstable and weak Turkey at the borders of Europe. Refugee problems, terrorist activities all around the European countries. I'm very sorry time is passed. Turkey facts facing and handling all these regional problems by itself. And Turkey has always been a part of Europe, Council of Europe. Thank but you, thank you, thank you very much. Against this reality, Turkey will not lose anything. Europe will lose. Thank you very much indeed. I must be a bit tricky with the time because there are still yeah, uh, 11, if I can't be correct, or dozen speakers to come. Thanks very much for very, very, very lively debate. I understand the topic is uh, most important, and that's why I'm also allowing you to discuss it thoroughly. But we have limitations. Now, next one is Mr. Seido from Azerbaijan. But I will uh, actually now close the speaker's list after Mr. Seido's presentation. So if anyone still wants to request a speech, please make that during the Mr. Seido's presentation, then the speaker's list is closed. So, Samad Seido, please, from Azerbaijan. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Turkey is one of the co-founders of the Council of Europe. And Council of Europe should take into account that Turkey is doing its best for eliminating the threats which the rest of the Europe has. The problem of refugees, the problem of terrorism. Turkey is really doing very, very important job in order to eliminate the threats. And the world is changing. Turkey became a strong, influential, and very important player in the international arena. And unfortunately, some countries uh, today is irritating exactly because of that, because of the strong, influential, and very important Turkey. Turkey, which is important for Europe and for the rest of the world. What we can uh, do and what we should take into account, unfortunately, some angels, some representatives of media, including even some international organizations, try to use human rights, democracy, rule of law as a tool to the uh, as a tool to the press to the Turkey in order to achieve their own objectives, which is absolutely unacceptable. 
and exactly what we can see within the report that the changing of attitudes within these very important issues my dear friends my dear colleagues the last country which can criticize turkey is armenia armenia not only cracked down a position representative in the parliament putting them in the jail not only killed journalists as a result of the hunger strike in the prison armenia occupied illegally occupied the state which neighboring to her and that's why we should understand that before presenting some ideas before criticizing we should understand that some countries try to use their own objectives in order to achieve something through the council of europe values which is absolutely unacceptable today those who are killing kids women elder people by shelling the ballistic missiles to the sleeping city in ganja talking about democracy talking about some violation of human rights in turkey this is absolutely unacceptable we are still have been waiting sanctions against armenia armenia should be expelled from the council of europe and what we can see armenia raised the question about the turkey this is absolutely unacceptable we should change our council of europe in order to be more precise more objective more balanced turkey today is doing its best as i said for europe for the rest of the world for stability for the communication between the people and for our values thank you thanks Ahmad. exactly three minutes thanks very much now i do have the final part starting and there are still 11 uh, speakers on the list and those we go through and no more addition uh, are made in terms of speakers list but let's try once again mr hammer uh, hammerberg are you there let's try you are the co-rapporteur and obviously you can start introducing the second part of the debate all pray here that now you are successful <laughs> No, no, Mr. Hammerberg, we are not blaming you at all. We understand that it's a technical problem. I dislike it as much as you dislike this. It would be so nice to be here and discussing it thoroughly through. Let's go to the move the list. At the end of the debate, you will have the floor if, it's, if we are successful. Thanks very much for your good effort. Now is this uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sayek Bok from Turkey, please. So thank you very much uh, for the floor. Um, clearly, these are difficult times when it comes to the core values of this very organization that we are now speaking within. Rule of law, human rights, democracy, we are experiencing a, a global erosion in these values and principles. And these principles we have to hold on to because we have experienced that they have benefited the world through a very peaceful period. So when these values are challenged in such a global fashion across geographies, I think we are all under the very huge responsibility of deciding on which way the world is going to take. Will we hold on to the world order where human rights, democracy, rule of law are critical, where we show solidarity around these values, where we have constructive and open dialogue based on mutual respect across these values, across geographies? Or will we be by watchers to what's going on? And instead of discussing these through dialogue, we push them away from the center of the debate while the erosion actually goes on. Not seeing it will not help. Therefore, I think the decision is clear. And we, I can easily say in Turkey, our party, the, the Republican People's Party, is very clear in representing the former of these. We need solidarity around these values. We need constructive dialogue around these values, both nationally and internationally. This is what the world and what each and every one of us needs. And I can easily say within Turkey, there are millions of seekers of democracy, rule of law and human rights. And these millions have gathered around political parties, which one of them is us. 
Millions who have gathered around strong women's movements, strong green movements, a strong civil society, despite pressure they feel, despite the price they end up paying. And our monitoring committee member, uh, Mr. Hedepkoch, has actually discussed these in detail. Maybe a short summary of the current state of affairs would be useful. We have an unprecedented instance of a local court defying a constitutional court decision. Uh, doubtless, all countries have the right to fight against terrorism. However, the rule of law, as well as a strong human rights framework, has to be sought in any such step that's taken. Unfortunately, in Turkey right now, democracy is replaced by government-appointed trustees. We have medium free, media free freedom um, deteriorating. This is worrying for many of us. Clearly, those who raise critical voices feel the pressure more, but this is affecting each and everybody in Turkey. Everybody who tries to speak out is now facing self-censorship. So I think we have to underline the following. All in all, dialogue is critical in democracy. We need it, we should all seek it out. The cost of erosion in these fundamental values and rights is felt by each and every one of the member of the society. It, it cross cuts across political party affiliation, across ethnicity, across religious belief, across walk of life. It affects everybody. So we need solidarity around the values and solidarity that seeks out both national and international dialogue. And indeed the local elections in Turkey actually shows and is proof that we can hold on to these values democratically. So I would like to end with a, a final statement, solidarity and constructive and open dialogue around these core values nationally and internationally. I have no doubt we're gonna have better days in the future. Thanks, Celine, very much, thanks very much. The next one is Mr. Emre from Turkey too. Hello. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as well documented in the report, the authoritarian discourses and practices of the current AKP government are well clear. But the main question is that what can we do in order to restore the democratic regime in Turkey? Our project as the main opposition party is not a simple governmental change. We are willing to recreate a brand new democratic system which will be based on fundamental principles of democracy, such as free and fair competition of all political actors, liberty of expression, rule of law, respect to all civil and political rights, and so on. We are not alone in this struggle. As my party, the Republican People's Party, the CHP, leads democratic struggle against the oppressive rule of the current government. This democratic alliance under the leadership of the CHP proved to be effective during the last municipal elections in 2019, as we managed to win the elections in major cities such as Istanbul and Ankara. That's why we are extremely hopeful for a change in the next general elections and firmly believe that we will manage to gain the majority in order to restore a pluralist parliamentary democracy. Though the political situation seems quite alarming. The domestic social dynamics are now in favor of the democratic forces, which makes us hopeful in the future of our country. As to the possible contrib contribution of the Council, my recommendation for the Council would be this. Please bear in mind that Turkey is not limited to its current government. When the relationship between Turkey and the Council deteriorates, it's not making things easier for the democratic forces. As the rise of popular authoritarianism is a global phenomenon, all the Democrats around the world should act in solidarity in order to struggle against the growing danger of authoritarian collapse. So when the relationship between the council and Turkey is damaged, it's not only affect Turkish government, but affects many different political and social forces in Turkey. That's why the dialogue between the Council and Turkey should be strengthened so that it will not be negatively affected by day-to-day -day political crisis. All in all, I emphasize again the growing force of democratic opposition in Turkey against authoritarian rule 
and our strong belief in electoral success in the next elections, which would pave the way to a pluralist democratic restoration. And I recommend the Council not to break the dialogue with Turkey, as it would only serve to the interests of authoritarian forces in Turkey. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much, Mr. Emre. Next one is Mr. Molazada from Azerbaijan. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to remind you that one of the biggest threats to humanity, to world, is terror. There is an anti-terror coalition. My country, as 9-11, are member of anti-terror coalition, and we know that how terror is dangerous because in Baku, Armenian terrorist group uh, in metro kill hundreds of people. One of the best jazz pianists in Europe was killed in terror act. And right now, we know that Turkey alone, it's uh, really strange that NATO allies not supporting Turkey combating terror. Uh, Bashar Assad, PKK, Asala, all of these uh, terror organizations now fighting in Karabakh against uh, Azerbaijani civilians. And uh, we think that uh, it's not fair to raise this issue when Turkey is combating terror, not to help them. Because international community and Council of Europe, first of all, should protect the right of people to live. And terror is a threat against humanity. Also, it was strange for me when uh, Roger Gale said that only Turkey and uh, uh, Russia occupied uh, territory of other countries. Mr. Gale, as a co-reporter on uh, Azerbaijan, should know that big part of territory of Azerbaijan under occupation and uh, Armenia, who occupied our territory, refused to uh, implement the UN Security Council resolution, uh, OEC Minsk Group uh, proposal, uh, thank you to thank to Armenian Prime Minister Pashinyan, who first time openly said no to diplomatic negotiation. We go to war because previous Armenian government always pretends that they are participating in negotiation. And uh, also about Cyprus, uh, I think that everybody should remember that black colonels started an this process and killed a lot of. Uh, innocent people in Turkish community of Cyprus. Also, Kofi Annan offered a plan for settlements of the conflict and Greek community said no to that. And I, again, we have uh, any form of uh, attack against Turkey. Uh, we think that uh, behind this attack, there are uh, some strange processes. Please, uh, you, in Europe, there is a growing of uh, anti-Semitism, anti-Islamism, xenophobia. There are a lot of facts about that in France and Germany, attacking to mosques, attacking to synagogues. Uh, and I think that we should uh, be really very, very strong against attempts to start crusade type of uh, thinking. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asim. Next one is uh, Mr. Ozabli from Turkey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Unfortunately, I have to say most of the claims in the report are unfounded. All over the world, those who have links with terrorism or terrorist organizations are arrested and tried, no matter he or she was a lawyer, a mayor, or a journalist. Please, let me give you a brief note about the displaced mayors, detained journalists, and other baseless allegations about Turkey. There are several ongoing investigations against these mayors, which refer in the report as displaced mayors. Specific charges include recruiting PKK members at municipal posts, using public funds to provide medical assistance to PKK members, encouraging PKK acts against the Turkish security forces, issuing messages praising PKK leader Öcalan, public remarks inciting violence and hatred, 
and this list continues. I am sure you know what is PKK. PKK is a terrorist organization recognized as a terrorist organization by European Union, America, Australia, and by many other uh, organizations in the world. About the detained journalists, I would like to remind you that Turkish constitution guarantees media freedom. Turkish legislation does not include any provisions that would lead to improvement, improvement of journalists on grounds of their journalist work. However, in the face of several terrorist threats and the harsh realities of the failed coup attempt, Turkey was faced with new challenges with regard to protection of the freedom of expression and media. The judiciary is independent and the courts decide on the merits of each case in Turkey. The vast majority of persons referred as detained journalists in Turkey are charged with serious offenses that has no connection with their work as journalists. Some of them were caught while transporting guns for members of a terrorist group, possessing explosive material or hand grenades, throwing motor cocktails, armed assault on a police car, planting bomb on a building, robbing and other offenses. And Turkey is defending its legitimate rights in the Eastern Mediterranean and the other parts of the region. About the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, Turkey will keep supporting Azerbaijan in political way because Azerbaijan is fighting to liberate its own territory, which is recognized by four United Nations resolutions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ozzabli. Next one is from Italy, Mr. Maniero, please. Uh, mi sentite? Potete sentirmi? Mi sentite, Presidente? Presidente Mi sentite? Okay. Okay. okay, so, mm, yes, I think... Um, sì, scusate, penso che sia importante anche prendere atto dei contenuti di questa... Uh, di, questa, di questo documento di cui io ringrazio i relatori perché, uh, perché sono dei contenuti che preoccupa leggere allora quando noi uh, andiamo a scorrerli passiamo dalle osservazioni sulla, sulla riforma costituzionale del 2017 e su come sia la commissione di Venezia che il greco abbiano espresso una serie di, di preoccupazioni proprio riguardo agli aspetti fondamentali della separazione dei poteri e quindi tra esecutivo e giudiziario, tanto per, per essere espliciti. Eh, qua, quando vediamo poi alcune quantificazioni numeriche, cioè circa un quarto tra giudici e pubblici ministeri, prosecutors, siano, siano poi stati rimossi ecco, dalle loro, dai loro ruoli, dalle loro posizioni. Eh, L'aspetto dell'informazione, già, già questa assemblea eh, con la risoluzione 23-17 aveva fatto una serie di, di espressioni di preoccupazioni eh, riguardo per esempio eh, alla, alla legge sui social media allora eh, le informazioni sbagliate ci sono ovunque, ci sono sui social media ci sono anche sui giornali di carta spesso i giornalisti eh, alcuni sono meravigliosi, fanno delle inchieste coraggiose e documentate altri scrivono sciocchezze, lo sappiamo tutti ma non è un motivo per restringere la libertà di informazione eh, è la libertà di informazione il presupposto anche eh, alla verifica della bontà di eh, di alcuni giornalisti non conoscendo nessuno la verità quella libertà di informazione la dobbiamo garantire eh, gli aspetti per esempio poi sulla carcerazione preventiva anche quella è una cosa che preoccupa molto leggere eh, un, altro, un altro aspetto per esempio che secondo me vale la pena sottolineare che anche altri colleghi avevano citato eh, l'aspetto per esempio dei, eh, dei difensori de degli avvocati il fatto che molti a quanto risulta siano stati arrestati con accuse collegate a terrorismo mentre difendevano dei clienti a loro volta accusati diciamo per questo tipo di, di, di ambito di, di reato beh, insomma è evidente che queste cose suscitano delle preoccupazioni e queste vogliono essere, vogliono essere degli spunti di collaborazione eh, nessuno vuole ingerire negli affari interni eh, della Turchia eh, ma caspita, eh, comprendere il motivo di queste preoccupazioni è essenziale per i fini della nostra collaborazione in questa, in questa comunità de, de, del Consiglio eh, d'Europa. 
Ecco, in questo contesto io spero che quindi anche diventi più comprensibile anche ai colleghi, ai colleghi turchi che ci ascoltano con pazienza e che replicano nel merito. Ecco perché per esempio nelle scorse riunioni c'era tutta quella preoccupazione anche riguardo per esempio alla trasformazione di Santa Sofia eh, in, in una moschea. Perché in questo contesto un atto come quello, che pure nel diritto della Turchia ci mancherebbe, ma assume un significato particolare che pare ancora di più radicalizzare alcune tendenze. Quindi io spero invece che riusciamo a riportarci sul dialogo, sulla cooperazione, a mettere l'esistenza di problemi e quindi anche risolverli insieme. Grazie. Thank you, Alvis. Next one is uh, Mrs. Haira Petayan from Armenia. Thank you very much. Um, I welcome you all and I also want to thank the reporter for the report and I think it's quite an interesting discussion. Of course, as my colleague Mr. Igitian has mentioned, no one will be interested to have a democratic neighbor um, uh, as much as we, we wish. And that was interesting that many things have been said by both Turkish and Azerbaijani delegates. And of course, Azerbaijani delegates are more sincerely and actively trying to protect Turkish, um, uh, Turkish colleagues uh, because they, they know that their country is step by step losing its sovereignty and turning like a Turkish region, obviously. And uh, recently, the dictator of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, ob obviously claimed that Azerbaijan and Turkey are going to solve the issues in the region and different aspects uh, as a base using their Turkish origin. So I am not surprised at this at all. And about um, democracy is talking uh, delegate whose country is, is ruled by a dictator for 17 years and instead of the vice president of the country we are have they are having a wife president of the country so that is also interesting what is what is here uh, i think to pay attention that internal and external relations and trends are so much connected. So if you see very wor worrying trends uh, internally, no matter what, it's going to influence also on external relations and what's seen in the different regions of the, of, the, of the world where Turkey is playing a great destabilizing role. Uh, they say Turkey is fighting against terrorism, but Turkey is deploying terrorists to fight in Nagorno-Karabakh. And this is not what I say as an Armenian delegate. This is what uh, international media is uh, saying. This is what many leaders of different countries are saying with, with lots of proof. So um, why Turkey is creating problems in the region then to fight against them? Why Turkey is obviously intervening in the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh? You said they are supporting Azerbaijan for diplomatic with diplomatic tools, but they obviously claim that they are ready to send troops to Nagorno-Karabakh. I don't think it's a diplomatic tool to send troops to Nagorno-Karabakh. So Turkish role is very much destabilizing in the region. And I think this is very much linked to the worsome trends in internal politics and i really think that council of europe has a lot to do to not let its member states to turn into some dangerous uh, countries which will affect not only neighbors of those countries but also the entire Ru europe turning it into a very destabilizing place to live and no matter what as i said once Today's insecurity and instability in South Caucasus will turn into tomorrow's instability in Europe. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tatevik. That was uh, next one. We'd have another lady, uh, Mrs. Yildiz uh, from uh, Turkey. Okay. Okay, I achieved. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chair. For, first of all, I would like to thank to, uh, all colleagues for sharing their ideas. Uh, while uh, interpreting a condition, we need to consider uh, the both sides of the issues. Uh, one of our colleagues uh, mentioned about Abdullah Hocalan, who is the leader of a terrorist organization PKK, which is already recognized as a ter terrorist organization by European Union and other international organizations. While talking about freedom, we need to clarify our position on people's right to live. PKK murdered more than 
50,000 people. Aybek Yalçın, a teacher, was murdered by PKK just three years ago. Uh, Nezmet Yılmaz, uh, he was also a teacher. He was also murdered by PKK. And uh, now we see that one of our members uh, criticized uh, the imprisonment of Öcalan, who is the leader of that terrorist, terrorist organization. So uh, I think we need to stand by the right of live of people. In 2014, headquarters of HPP called people uh, for a rebellion, showing Kobani as a reason. We need to ask who is responsible for the death of more than 60 of our citizens. Who killed a, ch a child at the age of 16? Yasin Böru. Yesterday, uh, I was in the funeral of our MP, uh, Mark Aresayan. I worked with him, and I'm really sad with that. Uh, and I hope he will rest in peace. Uh, he was a journalist, an Armenian journalist, and also uh, he is a close friend of Frantink, and uh, he was a friend of us. He is a friend of our uh, pr President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and he was also there also. So I would like to ask, does Armenia have any Turkish MP? Secondly, Dear colleagues, uh, have you heard about the uh, city of Genge? Do you know how many civilians were killed by Armenian forces just a few days ago? And uh, in the scope of democracy, uh, in, uh, in Greece, Greece, for instance, I wonder how many mosques uh, are reopened or protected in near future. We protect the church, uh, churches in Turkey uh, with large budgets. For instance, uh, two years ago, a Bulgarian Orthodox Church uh, reopened after a rest uh, restoration uh, costs uh, 60 millions. And uh, secondly, uh, and la lastly, uh, I wonder, uh, we are uh, following uh, the mosques and synagogue attacks uh, in Europe with concern. As a politician, we need to, to talk about the rise of hate speech against Muslims and xenophobia. Last few days in France, there had been a discussion on halal food by the interior, interior minister, for instance, in France. Uh, lastly, we are elected MP, MPs here. Uh, it's unbelievable to call a leader as a dictator. Ilham Aliyev is also legally elected leader of Azerbaijan. Karabakh is recognized territory of Azerbaijan. Uh, and there is an illegal occupation on that area. And we need to talk about uh, the foreign uh, fighters uh, who, are, uh, fight, uh, who fight for uh, Armenia on that Thank side. You very we need much, to talk Mr. about Kandil. that because we hear uh, this kind of uh, news about uh, news from that area. So uh, we need to be sides uh, on so, democracy for everyone. In that I'm so sorry, I'm and so we sorry because the time is really, really against us. Still quite a minute still to keep in the speakers. I'm, I'm so sorry if you have already close to one minute over time. Mr. Aydin, come in. Come in, Aydin, from Turkey. Are you there now? You will be connected to the Hi, sir. Good morning, President. Thank you very much for your kind, kind request. Uh, actually, I am on my way to my constituency, so I might be disconnected sometimes. So I am, then I'm going to do my best. Yes, uh, thank you for the rapporteurs. terms. Uh, I know that they, they, their effort is good, but honestly, some points are missing. You know, of course, Mr. Aydin, are the elected members of Mr. the parties. Mr. Aydin, Mr. Aydin, excuse me, could you check whether you have your language selector at floor? The connection is very bad. It's it's already checked and yes English I I I, I chose please English. Please the language selector to please move the language selector to floor, to not floor to English. First. Language yes. selector on your screen. How is it now? Move it to floor, please. I I did it now. Now it's better. Try. So, is it better now? Yes. Yes, of course, we wholeheartedly believe and dedicated ourselves to the main pillars of the, of the, you know, council under the names of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. Because as the people of Turkey, we paid a great price, you know, in order to get this democracy and rule of law. And, 
you know, now I think you are supposed to take into consideration the geopolitical situation of the country. As Turkey is the model country in the Middle East, trying to tackle multifaceted terrorism. And now, from July the 15th, 2016 onwards, Turkey is recuperating from side effects of this thwarted coup attempt, which caused 253 losses and thousands of injuries. You know, I think, yes, some speakers talked about these, you know, values, core values, democracy, rule of law, yes, human rights, but we should be very straight. We should not use them as lip service. We should not, you know, use the double standard in order to interp interpret these core values as far as Turkey is concerned. You know, I'm going to specify some examples, honestly. When I hear from an Armenian or a Greek colleague, you know, accusing of Turkey lacking democracy, honestly, I am appalled. Why? Because, uh, you know, Armenians are more safe in Turkey now. Now, in, in Turkey, at least, apart from our citizens, we have got, on the other hand, more than a thousand Armenians who who came to Istanbul voluntarily to work, to gain their life by working. And how you dare to assert that, you know, there is no freedom or there is no human rights, so on and so forth. On the other hand, Turkey is in Syria because, you know, there is a fire and massacre. Children are massacred in Idlib. And Turkey, you know, should listen to their screams. And of course, we have got, you know, some resolutions from UN, from European Commission, but it, they did not solve the problem so far. On the other hand, Turkey is embracing for more than 4 million refugees in Turkey, and we do not complain. And we, we keep talking about understanding, appreciation, but they should be mutual. This should be understood mutually. Turkey, you know, should be understood when he paid a great price for embracing for more than 4, four million people. Whereas Greece is, is tackling, you know, about 50,000 refugees and they are shouting, they are screaming, they are complaining and they are honestly violating some international rules as well. But nobody talks about, nobody, sorry, I am finishing. Nobody talks about the violation of the European Council's things. And as far as PKK is Thank concerned, human much. rights. Thank you very much. Last I'm word. so sorry because we must really move. The time is not in our favor. So I try last, now to last keep words, it last exactly. words, Please pay attention. There is lack of mosque in Greece, in Athens, and many Muslim people cannot pray. Ben, but our European Council is talking about the Hagia Sophia. Please talk about the people who cannot pray in the West countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Amir Aydin. Now we will move. So I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We must try to keep now the timing. I have been a bit flexible because the debate is very lively, but there are certain limits now. Uh, now it's Mr. Abit Asayan, Armenia. Thank you, dear colleagues. Um, I want to thank Rapporteur Hammerberg, who has been always standing for the human rights and has been always an honest reporter. I also want to thank the uh, Turkish President Erdogan and the ruling party for attending the funeral of their party member. That has been a remarkable achievement. I think that is the standards that we really want to wish because this is becoming ridiculous that they go to the funeral of Mark Aryesan and keep saying that as if uh, they have never had any problems with Armenia. Now, uh, regarding the situation uh, of Turkey, since 2013, basically, Turkey has been doing the following, creating the problem, then blackmailing, and not when I say Turkey, meaning Erdogan, because all of the delegates from Turkish, uh, or most of the delegates from the Turkish side are always saying, oh, don't touch our uh, precious Sultan Erdogan, he's not guilty for anything. Has been creating the problem and then telling, let's have a dialogue. They went to Syria to recruit men, to send them to Azerbaijan to fight. And this is uh, uh, in, in Nagorno-Karabakh. This is exactly what Turkey is doing, creating the problems. They created the problem with the migrants, how they appeared as migrants. One should question. Then they got money from EU. Now they are leveraging that against the European Union and the European states. That is how Erdogan is functioning. 
blackmailing, nothing else. And I think that this council should stand very firm on its feet when it is talking with Turkey, because they have learned the lessons very fine. There will be a couple of reports, some uh, condemnations, and then we go on. We need to stop this. And we should be very resolute about it because it sends a signal to other countries as well. Regarding the um, statements of the Azerbaijani delegation, for days, already for four weeks, they have been shelling civilian, um, civilians uh, in towns of Stepanakert, in Shushi, in Martoni, in Hadrut, with cluster bombs, recorded by the Human Rights Watch. This is the real face of these countries, of these two dictators. And the conversation here should be about the situation in Turkey and how we as a council member countries should stop it. Because if it is not stopped now, it will not stop. Turkey has been the headache. It has been the, run by the madman. And this madman is winning until now. All he is doing, creating problem, then blackmailing, then saying, let's solve this issue. We need to be very resolute in our steps. And also, we can not only kick out Turkey, but also Azerbaijan, or join them together and then kick out. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And now, Mrs. Selik from Turkey. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to start by unfortunately responding to the unacceptable and appalling comments of the speaker before me. I would just like to remind him that these provocative and poisonous comments on Turkey and Tur the Turkish president is not only an insult to the Turkish president, but also to the Turkish public in general. And uh, I would like to uh, basically uh, expressed my um, uh, dis disgust, basically, at his comments in this subject. I would like to thank the reporters for their work, although we are in disagreement in major instances. First of all, although the report states that it's fully aware of the security threats in Turkey, some parts of it indicates otherwise. It's important to recognize that Turkey has been going through one of the most challenging periods of its history in the last few years. Our country has been targeted by multiple terrorist organizations and hundreds of our people lost their lives in attacks organized by the PKK, ISIS and FETA. Unfortunately, the recent security operations demonstrate the endurance of these threats. We have had to bear the consequences of Syria and Iraq turning into failed states and exporting insecurities through the border. Left alone by the international community to deal with this historic humanitarian and security crisis, Turkey took steps to address these threats in order to protect its people and the four million refugees it's hosting. Despite this situation, not only Turkey ended the state of emergency, but it also took significant steps to reform its justice system. Secondly, it's vital to recognize that the legal proceedings against individuals who are suspected of establishing material relations with terror groups are carried out by the independent judiciary. Unfortunately, among these individuals, there are politicians. The charges investigated or brought by the prosecutors against these politicians include funneling of public funds to terrorist groups, carrying out orders of terrorist organizations in public duties, aiding and abetting terror attacks, and inciting hatred and violence. These are very serious charges, and in any European country, they would be investigated. All remedies, including the right of individual application to the Constitutional Court and the right of appeal to the ECHR is available to everyone. For the delivery of justice, it's of utmost importance that these proceedings are carried out in accordance with the rule of law and all suspects are given a fair trial. I would like to emphasize that, as stated in the report, following constructive engagement between Turkey and the Council of Europe, a new judicial reform strategy and human rights action plan was recently implemented. As part of this strategy, in the Parliament, we have adopted several legislative amendments, improving the protection of human rights, especially expanding the scope of freedom of expression and enhancing the effectiveness of legal remedies against judicial decisions concerning freedom of expression, as well as introducing limitations to the length of pre-trial detention, all of which 
I believe demonstrate the strong political will to revitalize the judicial reform process and facilitate the right to fair trial in all cases. Finally, I would like to thank the reporters for recognizing the strong foundations of democracy in Turkey. Turkey and welcoming the recent legal reforms, the continuation of which can be supported through constructive dialogue with the Council of Europe and the Assembly. Thank, thank you. you very much, Madam. Thank, thank you very, very much, much Madam. Now we go after this very important speech coming from South Europe. We have now a minute Lord. Thank you very much, uh, Kimo. I'm glad you're able to get through to this northern part of uh, the United Kingdom uh, after your problems with uh, Thomas Hammenberg. Uh, uh, so it's uh, good you to are. be able Here to say uh, a few words. Thank you. Uh, and you know, we have very good relations between the United Kingdom and Turkey over many, many decades. Uh, we have many, many people before the uh, pandemic who spend their holidays in Turkey, who have Indeed, uh, some have villas there. And of course, they are uh, joint members of NATO, which is very important. So we don't criticize them lightly. But I can say on this occasion, uh, I agree with R Roger Gale. I don't always agree with him, as he knows, uh, in uh, the United Kingdom. But he's right on this. Uh, and as was said earlier, uh, the report I produced about media freedom uh, criticized Turkey uh, and was agreed by the uh, assembly. And uh, Stefan Schenach, uh, who is now taking over, has taken over as general rapporteur, will confirm that this continues. And we're going to con uh, consider later on uh, the report by Mr. Brennan uh, on academic freedom in Turkey, uh, among other countries as well, and it is criticized. Uh, and uh, this monitoring committee report was accepted unanimously uh, by the monitoring committee. So I do hope that... Uh, we will accept this in the Standing Committee. We're not talking about uh, Armenia or Azerbaijan. We're talking specifically about the position in Turkey. The report by the Monitoring Committee was clear and unequivocal and accepted unanimously. And I hope that this uh, Standing Committee will also accept it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lord George. <laughs> Thanks a lot indeed. Now we continue. Mr. Kanyaliyev uh, from Azerbaijan. Problems? It's open, Mr. Kanjaliev. If not, let's go to Mr. Sidali now, and I will allow you to come back if if it if it's feasible later on, Mr. Sidali, Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dear members, uh, as a member of opposition in Turkey, we are aware of lacks of democracy, but for sure, nothing justifies terrorism uh, at all or any kind of support to the terrorist groups. If it's about terror, all MPs, members of NGOs or local authorities should be bound by law. Uh, those who have taken part in coup attempt, in ISIS-related terrorist attacks, or PKK for over 35 years, cannot and should not be treated as those who want to improve the democracy and the rule of law in their communities. Uh, last trials uh, are about street, street protests regarding Ayn al Arab, which is a district in Syria, and the protesters uh, use guns, explosives, burn down properties in Turkey. So the tar targets were not only security people, security forces, uh, but also civilian people. 46 people died, more than 700 people were injured. Well, the tried people are blamed for encouraging the pro protests for all the people here, for all of us, the definition of terror, I believe, is crystal clear. For us, PKK uh, is a terror, organ terror organization 
exactly as ISIS. All resources of terror must be stopped and all legal political parties should declare that they are against terror. There is no good, no just, no my terrorist. Those who are linked to terror must be trialed and we will follow that the trials are and the judgments are fair and the rule of law is and will be our priority. As an opposition party, we will constantly check that there is no misuse of laws in our country as much as possible. But such debates, somehow supporting those who are linked with terror, hinders our actions, which are for peaceful democracy and rule of law. If you put someone supporting terror with those quarreling for more democracy into the same box, believe me, everything gets more blurred. In order to make terrorism stronger, and uh, in order not to make terrorism stronger, and in order to strengthen the democracy, we all must be for the rule of law. But all of us should be against double standards, if, especially if it's about terror. Double standards are putting obstacles in making sincere dialogue, especially the double standard criticism of Greece and Armenia as they're acting against international laws and agreements uh, should not be taken into the serious consideration. Arming islands, which should be unarmed due to many agreements or occupying a country for nearly 30 years, bombing a civilian city in Ganja and talking about democracy, rule of law, doesn't sound sincere to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. If I understood correctly, Akif Kilichev asked a point of order. So please, Akif, quickly your point of order, what it is about. It's a very quick point of order, Mr. President. Thank you for taking it. Uh, the speaker from Armenia, Member of Parliament, who spoke before Ms. Celik, I think it was Mr. Abetyan, or he used a language and words against a elected president representing his country, which are unacceptable and which, in my view, are hate speech. I want this on the record, and I want to one more, once more to say the, the member of parliament who spoke before Ms. Celik from Armenia. Thank you very much. Very much, Akif. It's not exactly point of order. It's more concept. You have an argument. I can understand, but it's an argument. It's not a point of order. It's noted. Now we move the discussion. Next one is uh, Mr. 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 Uh, Kanjaliev Tural, you are there. I understood the connection is there. Thanks. Floor is yours, Kanjaliev. Is Tural the note? Well, we must still continue. The final in, on my list is. Uh, Mr. Yellow from Sweden. Please, Mr. Yellow. Um, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Hello, can you hear me? Can hear, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, it's very important we have this conversation. And um, I would start by quoting uh, Dr. Margaret King that says, our lives begin to end. Mr. Jallo? The day we become Mr. Jallo? I'm afraid. Mr. Jallo, Mr. Jallo, please, please. Yeah? Your language selector yeah? is definitely not on the floor. Could you please move your language selector to floor? Language selector, the bottom of your screen to floor, please. Sorry, these technical problems. I dream the day when we are here together in Strasbourg all. I have had once a dream. We are so sorry to each other, of course. Mr. Jallo Momodo, you can try once again, try.
du ska försöka ännu en gång. Even my Swedish didn't help. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? We can hear, please. Okay, uh, sorry about that. I'm on the train, so the network is bad. I was just saying, um, um, I, I was quoting uh, Martin Luther King that says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And uh, uh, it's important that we speak out when we see things that matter. And the gro growing authoritarian rule in Turkey um, matters, and we need to speak about it. We need to speak about the mass arrest of opposition without due process. We need to speak about the removal of democratically elected mayors. We need to speak about the mass arrest of journalists and the stripping of freedom of expression and free press. Um, and I understand some of the colleagues from Turkey, I hear them saying that, you know, um, that are human rights violations in other countries, that is Islamophobia in other countries. Why don't we speak about that? I can assure you that we will speak about that. We will always stand uh, um, for democracy and the rule of law. We will always speak, regardless where these violations of human rights come from, we will always speak about them. But today's debate is about Turkey, and that's why we must speak about Turkey. All violations of human rights are wrong, regardless of who or what is what country is behind it. I can assure my friend from Turkey uh, that we will speak about the Islamophobia that we see around the world. But rather than confrontation, what we seek is constructive dialogue, a dialogue that seeks to resuscitate the core values of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. This is why we're having this debate and nothing else. And it's important that we understand that instead of taking the confrontation uh, route, we have a constructive dialogue in order to be able to talk about what needs to be done in Turkey to resuscitate democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. Um, and I thank the rapporteur very much and the opportunity to speak on, on this debate. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now we are almost at the final end of the debate. We try still one speaker who was somewhat disconnected or we couldn't create the connections. This is Tural Ganjaliye from Azerbaijan. We try once again, if we are successful, you have the floor. If not, then we move to the rapporteurs. So, Mr. Tural Ganjaliye, you have the floor now. No success. Unfortunately, no success next time. Now we move to the, the speakers. This is absolutely closed. We are now moving towards the final statements. And obviously, we try once again, Mr. Hammerberger, the co rapporteur, please. Now let's try if we are successful. Mr. Hammerberger. Hello. Wow, wow. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Thank you. I, I, I apologize for the part of this, which is my, my fault, actually. I have been able to listen to some of the discussions. I think it, it was a heated discussion, but I think very useful. And I, I think it is the start of a dialogue which will be frank, but also, of course, being constructive. And that is the spirit of the report as well. Uh, I don't want to repeat anything we, we, of the points were made in the report, but let me end up this discussion by saying that we now expect that the strategy for reform of the justice system and the future human rights action plan would actually be such that they would mean a, an uh, improvement of the problems that we have raised in the support. We also expect the Turkish authorities now to show the necessary political will to expand freedom of expression, freedom of assembly and media freedom. We also hope that there is a purpose, uh, the Council of Europe, uh, of such improvement. The Council of Europe is, of course, ready to cooperate with this. We are ready to cooperate and have a dialogue um, and when revising the election legislation and, and law of political parties, I'm sure that the advice of the Venice Commission would be very useful for your efforts. 
So we have expectations now, and we will, of course, follow the development when it comes to the response to our requests in this report uh, continuously. And uh, so I, I hope that we can have a constructive dialogue. We have different opinions on some points, but we are based on our work on the Council of Europe standards when it comes to basic human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I am amazingly flexible chair. I already closed the speaker's list, but because I also made this video conference technical distances, etc., etc., I allow, because I can see that uh, that our friend from Azerbaijan is there, so Tural Kanjaliyev, try to be very short. I, this is extraordinary that you, I allow now to use present, please. Microphone, please. please. Your microphone, we cannot hear. We are very sorry. Next time, there are some technical problems. Yes, we dislike it too. Tural, that's that. Okay, let's move. We are very sorry. We cannot hear you. you we can see you, but we cannot hear. Now we move to the final stage in terms of uh, reporting. Mr. Howell, please, the co rapporteur. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, th th this has been a, a very lively and informed debate, and it, it was great to, to have Thomas back with us, however brief um, that that connection may, may, may have held. All, all I want to say is we have tried to be extremely balanced in this report. We, we are utterly, utterly committed to dialogue, uh, and you know, that cannot be stressed uh, more, more seriously uh, than, that, than we have so, so far. But it is completely right that we should question Turkey over human rights, over the rule of law and over democracy. And that is what we have tried to do uh, in, in this report. So I hope that the standing committee will approve the recommendation uh, because uh, I think that that is a sensible way forward for the dialogue that we wish to see for the future. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Howell. And now does the vice chairperson of the monitoring committee wish to take the floor if so mr nemeth the floor is yours three minutes thank you kimo uh, mr chairman colleagues good morning to everybody i would like to thank our reporters mr hammerberg and mr howell for the preparation of their report which was approved unanimously by the monitoring committee on its last session and was the base of our very lively discussion this morning. It is needless to say that the travel restrictions that are in place due to the COVID pandemic make the work of the committee even more challenging than usual. In spite of all these difficulties, we have continued our monitoring work and discussed current issues and recent developments. In the case of Turkey, we managed to conduct several exchanges of views and hearings with the participation of members of both the majority and the opposition, governmental and non-governmental experts, as well as members of the Venice Commission and the Congress of local and regional authorities. When we talk about Turkey, first of all, we must always bear in mind its geopolitical situation and the fundamental stabilizing role it plays not only in the Middle East, but also in ensuring Europe's security. Migration is one of the great challenges of our age, and I cannot emphasize enough that Turkey has been making a great effort for many years to host over 4 million refugees. At this time, it is Turkey that is protecting Europe from another uncontrolled wave of migration, 
Consequently, its stability is key for all of us. On the other hand, the report identifies several challenges and shortcomings in the field of human rights, rule of law, and democracy, and encourages the authorities to take steps to comply with Turkey's obligations towards the Council of Europe. Turkey can do it, as many among them, Mrs. Shaw pointed out, and Turkey should be, we should be aware, has a very dynamic political scene, a vibrant civil society that has a strong aspiration to fully enjoy and exercise its fundamental freedoms and is uh, a valuable asset, this fact, for the country and for uh, democracy in general as well. I'm convinced that we must maintain a sincere and uh, open dialogue to address all the relevant issues and for this end, reinforce our cooperation with the Turkish authorities. This is the only way we can make progress in this relationship for our mutual interest. Excluding Turkey from the Council of Europe is definitely not in our interest. I would like to thank again for all those who participated in the preparation of the report, most of all for the reporters, but also our Turkish colleagues for their constructive attitude in the committee. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Cholt, also your presentation. <clears throat> I must admit uh, it was technically quite difficult, but the debate was interesting and I almost say fruitful. Thanks for all of you, who, those who prepared the report, obviously, and those who commented it. Thanks very much indeed. Now we shall move to uh, proceed to the vote. And, and First of all, I would like to remind you that only members of the Standing Committee are entitled to vote. So it's very much restricted only to the members of Standing Committee, so please remember that one. And now we are looking at the amendments to the draft resolution, and we had the draft resolution just be debated, and we will look at the amendments individually. I will be taking in order them, which they appear in the compendium of amendments. You have it all. I remind you that speeches on amendments are limited to one minute. One minute only, and there are actually only two speeches. One who supports amendment and another one who is against and then voting. I hope the technicalities might be challenging to us once again, but let's try to move. And for me, it's also interesting how we succeed, but, uh, but let's try to do it together nicely. First, who would like to support amendment number one? Is it Mr. Yilditz? If so, the floor is yours. You should ask the floor, Mr. Yilditz. Yes. Somehow improved with the participation of Mr. Ersoy, but still feeling uh, felt uh, to resort to hunger strike and that is not good enough to be rewarded here. Instead of that, the assembly can emphasize the right to a fair trial of lawyers detailed on terror-related charges also. This is my point. Uh, and hunger strike, that uh, fast, is uh, also blamed by the European uh, Court of Human Rights as a way of protest. That's why I think we should correct it. Thank you. Thought there was some problems at the beginning, but we got your point. Thanks a lot. And anyone against? Is it Mr. Howell? John, you are now. It's your, your turn now. Thank you very much. Um, we, we both Thomas and I are against this amendment. What it would do is delete the whole paragraph, which is emphasising the difficult situation of lawyers in Turkey. And it also emphasizes the, the essential role of lawyers in the administration of justice. So I would urge everyone to vote against. Thanks. 
now the vote is uh, now we will vote on this amendment and i declare the vote is open and you know the system already beforehand how it it, it is so please the vote is now open where i see the result where i see the result Vote is, will close in 15 seconds. Okay. The vote is closed now. And Wojciech will check. This is still a process to check. It's not so easy because we should take that, check that the only standing committee members are, are voting. Yeah. Uh, display the voting. The results. Okay. Where is the results? Mr. President, there are two members who vote in favor, 23 against, and one abstention. Could I kindly remind members that only those members who have logged in with the word vote in front of their name have voting rights in the meeting. So if all other members could abstain from taking part in the vote, it would be helpful. So I repeat the result to in favor, 23 against and one abstention. The amendment is rejected, but please remember what Wojciech just said, that, that it makes me ask to move much quicker. Now we move to the amendment number two, Mr. Ilditz, to speak for. I don't, ah, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, he wants this sentence to be deleted because the communication of these prisoners, including Öcalan, who is leader of one of the brutal terrorist organizations in the world and responsible from that of uh, tens of thousands of people, is not completely cut off. Visits and phone calls have happened during last year. Considering that they are prominent members of terrorist organization, court decisions on the restrictions are proportional. Mr. Chairman, Öcalan is trying to direct the organization for new terror ac terrorist actions from the prison through messages by through his lawyers and visitors, and they even declared it pub in the public. That's why it hurts the feeling of Turkish public and it uh, constitutes a big violation of law. That's why we want this to be deleted. Thank you. Anyone against? Mr. Howell. Thank you. I, I'm against this. We, I think we have to remember that in 2019, the Assembly had already called on the Turkish authorities to follow up the recommendations of the CPT with regard to Abdullah Ocalan and other prisoners who are at the Imrali F-type high security closed prison. They are prevented from meeting their family members and lawyers, except on rare occasions. The last meeting with the lawyers took place in August uh, 2019, and now the convicts at that, at that prison are banned from meeting their lawyers for another six month period. So we are against this, this amendment. 
Thanks. We will now vote. Vote is open. Vote will be closed in 15 seconds. Vote is closed. I ask for the results to be displayed. It takes a bit of time once again. Sir, Sir President, three members voted in favour, 21 against and one abstention. The amendment is rejected. We move to the next one, amendment number three. And is it once again, Mr. Yildiz? who will speak favor please the floor is yours mr chairman i wish the previous amendments would be adopted but uh, pkk is enlisted as a terrorist organization by eu and nato i by many member states by almost all member states here uh, i think i hope that the standing committee she has the will to describe the uh, leader of the ter terror organization as he is. At least, this is a fair amendment, and I strongly urge the committee members to support me in this. Otherwise, me personally and the Turkish public will think that uh, this is not a proper criticism uh, and PKK is rewarded by the standing committee. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone against? Mr. Ozai. Yeah, th yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I personally, I think that this amendment is also as irrelevant as the previous amendment. Why I am saying this? Mr. Ojalan has been under solitary confinement 21 years, one phone call, just one phone call over 21 years. His lawyers didn't meet him for eight years, maybe I, I think more than eight years, only after the hunger strikes and so many people died. So it is a vexed issue. It's a very controversial issue. With this amendment, mainly uh, Mr. Yildiz is trying to spoil the previous uh, paragraph. So that is why we are strongly opposed to it. Regardless of the charge with which Mr. Öcalan was convicted, he is, yes, he is a convict, but still he does have rights which are and recommended by the CPT. So that is why we kindly ask all of the committee members to refuse this amendment. Thank you so much. Thanks. Now we will vote on the amendment and vote is open. Vote is closed in 15 seconds. Vote is closed and we will get the results. Wojciech will give it. Mr. President, four members voted in favour, 20 against, and there are two abstentions. 
The amendment is rejected and we forward move to the amendment number four. Mr. Yildiz, you wanted to speak for, please. Now, Mr. Chairman, this report is about the political opposition in Turkey, situation of the political opposition. But this paragraph is about uh, foreign operations of Turkey. Uh, mainly, I think it uh, means Syrian operations. It's all, it is not compatible. It is not relevant to the title and uh, purpose of the report. The actors are very different in war zone. We, are, we face ISIL, Nusra, PKK, YPG, YPD. Unfortunately, two superpowers, one of them, as a brutal Assad regime, which is supported by another superpower, and PKK was cooperated with another superpower. So it is not fair to put this uh, paragraph in this report. It may be subject in another report. Uh, and there is no concrete violation in this paragraph. That's why I, we, we, I strongly urge to delete, to remove this paragraph. Thank you. Anyone against? No. Well. Uh, thank you. I, I, I'm against this. Um, the, the, the monitoring committee took a very clear position in favour of, uh, of, of of this clause, and the amendment does not prejudge anything, but it echoes the serious concerns that were expressed and which need to be addressed by our assembly. Thanks. We will vote. Vote is open. Still 15 seconds. Board is closed. And the result. Mr. President, there are four members who voted in favor, 22 against, and one abstention. The amendment is rejected. We move for the next one, number five. No, no, actually, these are the all amendments. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We are coming now to the issue of voting on the draft resolution as uh, not amended as it is. It wasn't amended at all during the, <coughs> after the debate. And, and uh, now when we are uh, dealing with the whole resolution, uh, it, would, it would be adopted so that the single majority is required. That's enough. And now I declare the vote open for the whole draft resolution. So the vote is open now. Still 15 seconds. So now we are voting on the whole draft resolution. Okay, vote is closed. And the results. Mr. President, 23 members voted in favor, 3 
against, and there are two abstentions. Thanks very much. That means that the draft resolution in document number 15171 has been adopted. Now, who? What is it? I did the head, the name. Okay, let me ask the floor, please. The floor is yours. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry to inform you, I have voted in all those votes, and yet my vote has not been registered. Could you um, have an investigation into that? Um, I've put on the, um, the messages how I voted in each case, and I'm very familiar with the voting, and I pressed submit, but it did not appear to register, and I believe I have the right to vote. So if you could investigate that, I would be grateful, and if you could add my name to the record, thank you. We are very sorry, Cheryl. We are very, very, very sorry about this one. This oh, is... I understand. I understand. And it's yeah. not going to make a difference to the result. But as True. I'm here, True. I've listened to the debate all the way through, and I've voted, and I know I've pressed submit. I think I would like that to go on the record. But I do understand you've to put to the record that you were somewhat away, but what we cannot do more than that one. But we are so, so sorry. At Give least I thought that the result was what you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, but I just needed to make that point in case that's happened to anybody else as well. True, 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 true. I have, I'm repeating, I'm hating this distance uh, video conference type of things, and this is to make him particularly. We agree. Now, Mr. Yildiz wants also to ask the floor. Please, what is the matter? Mr. Chair, uh, it doesn't give me time to answer the criticisms. But I should again repeat that Turkey is a deep-rooted European state, founding member of this council, but with some different conditions from most of the countries represented here, including... Yildiz, thank you very much. I said originally that you will have actually time to argue for your amendments, and you did have time to argue for your amendments. Uh, uh, the issue is closed now. We shouldn't continue uh, yeah. this now. There will be good time for you to tell us I, the but I am surprised. I am, I am surprised that the members couldn't describe Öcalan as leader of the terrorist organization. This is to my surprise. Thank you. Thank you very much for your note. Actually, we understood already earlier uh, in the debate, etc., etc. The issue is now closed. And what now do we are doing? We will have an, three other items, uh, uh, but we need a, there was a request from the floor to have a bio break bio uh, pause and we will have five minutes pause now so exactly five minutes we resume but but we need a little bit exercise etc etc so uh, we'll we resume in five minutes thanks
Ladies and gentlemen, friends, we are back uh, for the standing committee meeting. It was really necessary to have a bit exercise. I suppose all of you, particularly here when we are sitting, sitting, you can at least move maybe at home or where, wherever you are. We continue now the, we are in the, uh, item number 27, uh, debate on the report, the principles and guarantees of advocates. That is a document 15152, tabled by the Committee on Legal Affairs and Human Rights. The report will be first presented by the rapporteur, Mr. Bashkin, and as usual, 10 minutes in total, the speaking time, which you can obviously divide, as you know, the presentation of the report and, and the debate. So, uh, Mr. Bashkin, the floor is now yours. Добрый день, уважаемый господин председатель, добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Для меня большая честь в качестве докладчика представить доклад о принципах и гарантиях адвокатов. Этот вопрос имеет жизненное важное значение для работы и является одним из приоритетных для комиссии по правам человека, по юридическим, юридическим вопросам и правам человека. Совет Европы – это международная организация, занимающаяся вопросами укрепления верховенства права. Принцип верховенства права обеспечивается эффективным отправлением правосудия. Но судебная система не может функционировать без адвокатов. Адвокаты профессионально наблюдают за соблюдением законности и действий в отношении подзащитных на всех стадиях уголовного преследования. А адвокаты... Нужно понимать, что адвокаты играют важную роль в этом смысле в отношении защиты прав человека. А в нашей аудитории не нужно напоминать, что защита прав человека является еще одной базовой ценностью деятельности Совета Европы. Работа адвоката – это оказание квалифицированной юридической помощи в противостоянии человека и государства. Это эффективный инструмент предотвращения физического и психического насилия в отношении осужденных, задерживанных и подозреваемых. Таким образом, можно сказать, что содержание доклада совпадает с основным направлением работы нашей организации. Мы помним, что гарантии защиты профессиональных прав адвоката должны соответствовать определенным принципам, важнейшими из которых являются своевременный доступ к подзащитному, конфиденциальность общения адвоката и подзащитного, Недопустимость адвоката к привлечению ответственности за выполнение профессиональной деятельности и защита от незаконных посягательств на его личность и на его имущество. В Европейской конвенции по правам человека мы можем обнаружить основы обязательств государств по защите и уважению прав адвокатов. В статьях 5, 6 и 8 конвенции содержатся гарантии прав против произвольного задержания, содержится право на справедливое судебное разбирательство, защиту частной жизни и переписки, что в целом можно расценивать как основу для обеспечения профессиональной гарантии адвокатов. Существует еще ряд международных документов, которые указывают на права адвокатов в осуществлении именно профессиональной деятельности. Это основные принципы, касающиеся роли адвокатов, принятые 8-м Конгрессом Организации Объединенных Наций в 1990 году. Это рекомендация Р-2021 Комитета министров Совета Европы о свободе осуществления профессии адвоката. Это Европейская хартия основополагающих принципов юридической профессии. В результате мы имеем солидный свод стандартов, но, к сожалению, все они носят рекомендательный характер и поэтому не всегда выполняются государственными участницами Совета Европы. Наш доклад – посвящен необходимости обеспечения деятельности адвокатов на европейском континенте. Перед нами не стояла задача расследовать притеснение адвокатов в отдельных странах. Поэтому в своем коротком выступлении я не стану перечислять отдельные государства и описывать ситуацию у них. Но я считаю нужным заявить, что со времени последнего доклада нашей комиссии по этому вопросу, а он был в, 1000, а в 2017 году, общего Улучшение ситуации на пространстве Совета Европы не произошло. 
Адвокаты продолжают подвергаться нападениям и даже убийствам. В ряде стран они сталкиваются с угрозами и преследованиями, и очень часто от э, государственных чиновников. Их исключают от, из коллегии адвокатов и не допускают к практике. Препятствуют выполнению ими своих обязательств, обязанностей в суде. Их вызывают для дачи показаний по делам их собственных клиентов. Лишают права посещать своих клиентов в местах лишения свободы, а тюремные власти могут прослушивать разговоры с клиентов и доверителей. В офисах адвокатов проводятся обыски, изымаются компьютеры и забираются файлы. У профессиональных объединений адвокатов отбирают независимость. Очень важно, чтобы ассамблея выразила свою озабоченность в связи с этими продолжающимися нарушениями. Мы должны настаивать на том, чтобы государства соблюдали свои обязательства. Они также должны соблюдать стандарты международных документов, о которых я уже говорил. Мы понимаем, что в некоторых случаях и в некоторых ситуациях стандарты могут отличаться. Например, в случаях борьбы с терроризмом, организованной преступностью или отмыванием денег. Но даже такие ситуации не дают властям права на нарушение адвокатской тайны. Такие случаи должны быть тщательно регламентированы и соблюдаться с особой осторожностью. В нашем проекте резолюции излагаются соответствующие стандарты. В нем напоминается, что во многих государствах членах сохраняются проблемы, а в некоторых даже обостряются, и содержится призыв к действиям на национальном уровне для обеспечения того, чтобы жизненно важная работа адвокатов уважалась и защищалась, включая совершенствование эффективной национальной законодательной базы. Однако, сохраняющаяся широко распространенная практика вмешательства в работу адвокатов показывает, что существующих инструментов недостаточно. В 2018 году Ассамблея предложила Комитету министров подготовить конвенцию о профессии адвоката. Важно, что первоначальный ответ Комитета министров был положительным. Он просил Комитет экспертов предоставить доклад о том, является ли наше предложение осуществимым. Однако, уважаемые коллеги, процесс идет очень медленно. Мы видим, что поручено провести повторные исследования для изучения необходимости принятия конвенции. Может быть, кто-то спросит нас, почему парламентская ассамблея должна заниматься побуждением к принятию конвенции по узкопрофессиональной группе лиц. Я отвечу на этот вопрос с тем, с чего я начал свое выступление. Значительная часть адвокатской практики является правозащитной деятельностью. И сами адвокаты вместе с омбудсменами – это профессиональная категория, официально занимающаяся правозащитной деятельностью. А вопросы защиты прав и верховенства права, как я уже сказал, это ядро всей деятельности Совета Европы. Настало время возобновить наше предложение с тем, чтобы Комитет министров осознал безотлагательность устранение сложившейся ситуации, поэтому комиссия по юридическим вопросам предлагает проект рекомендаций. Уважаемые коллеги, я закончил свое выступление. Благодарю вас за ваше внимание. Каспарин Башкин, спасибо большое за ваше выступление. И сейчас мы продолжаем дискуссию. Вначале будет, конечно, это политические группы. The, we will open now the discussion and we'll start the, dis uh, start the discussion with the political groups. And the first one will be the socialist group, uh, Democrats of the Greens, Margaret de Boer from Netherlands. The floor is yours. Pajalusta. Thank you so much. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, I want to thank the rapporteur. Uh, oh, my text is running away. Um, for the thorough and clear uh, report. I have to mention it again. <sighs> Techniques. Uh, well, I do it by heart then. Uh, I think it's, oh. it's a very important uh, report. I'm losing my text. It's irritating. We can hear you. Uh, Please continue, continue. Yes, we can hear you, but I wrote it down. Um, which underlines the important role lawyers play in protecting human rights and human rights defenders and categorizes the ways in which lawyers are being attacked or mistreated. And I want to underline the important role that lawyers play in maintaining the rule of law in our member states. 
without legal aid and representation by qualified and independent lawyers, access to justice and fair, tri fair trial are illusions. Our citizens need lawyers to realize their rights. It is the task of the state to create the environment in which lawyers can do their work safely. Besides being a member of the Dutch Senate, I also work as a lawyer in Amsterdam. In my city, a colleague lawyer that represented a witness in a criminal case was murdered by criminals last year. I was present at the memorial meeting of the Bar Association. This murder shocked my country and put the issue of the safety of lawyers and the obligation of the state to protect them on the political agenda. As we can read in the report, in many countries, lawyers do not only face a lack of protection by the state, but have to face unlawful interference by the state and even harassment or imprisonment. The report presents several examples, and I can also refer to what has been said of the situation of lawyers in Turkey in the current debate this morning. This report is not the first report on the issue. In 2080, PACE urged the Committee of Ministers to create a binding convention to protect the independence of sa and safety of lawyers because soft law is not sufficient, as the rapporteur just pointed out to us. I think it's a good thing that the Committee of Ministers um, issued a feasibility study to it and I also think it's a good thing that today we will adopt the resolution and recommendation to keep the pressure on the process because uh, it is going slowly and if it can be speeded up, uh, it would be nice. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. And the next one is the EPP group, Mr. Alexander Pochik. Please, the floor is yours. You should ask the floor to request the to request to speech, then we can open it to you. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, indeed, uh, this is an uh, extremely important report. And this is, uh, I believe, the heart of the whole system of defending rights, human rights, democracy through rule of law. Uh, from time to time, everybody knows, mostly this is American jokes about lawyers and uh, probably all of us, we know few of them. But uh, this report shows that how important is the role of lawyers. Uh, I'm very sad that in, uh, in paragraph 27 of explanatory memorandum of Mr. Bashkin, I can find Poland. But uh, my Russian colleague is uh, absolutely right. Since 2016, uh, the uh, political uh, ruler, rulers of Poland, they are trying to restrain uh, the freedom of, uh, of uh, defense. And this is unfortunately one of many signals that uh, we are not going in the good direction in Poland. Only a few days ago, one of the most important lawyers in Poland, he was uh, not arrested because uh, uh, it was no, uh, uh, no such a final, but he was stopped by the authorities just a few days before he was about to to go to the court and show uh, evidences against people from government. This is unfortunately the case of not only of the lawyers, of the politicians as well, all over Europe, the criminal charges 
somebody, the authorities are bringing against them are faked many times and they are used only for the political reasons to stop them uh, crying about democracy. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Alexander. And now we will move to the ALDE group and Mrs. Yufereva Sukarovsky from my neighboring country, Estonia, please. Is she back? She is back. Mm -hmm. Highly respected chair and uh, dear colleagues, on behalf of all the group, this is my honor today to intervene with the report, the principles and the guarantees of advocates. First of all, I would like to thank the rapporteur, Mr. Alexander Bashkin, for this fair, actual and well-detailed report which reveals clearly the today's reality conditions to this reality conditions and threats the lawyers have to handle in the daily work i can confirm that situation in where the lawyers become the objects of attack attack on their personal safety and liberty and face the lack of respect for the rule of law needs strong immediate and effective reaction on both levels on the international level such as council of europe and on the level of national government. Thus, all the group supports the idea of establishment a platform on protection of advocates and elaboration of Council of Europe Convention on the profession of lawyers. Secondly, in democratic country, each person has the right to the judicial advocacy. We cannot tolerate that because of political or religious views belonging to some minority group, this basic right of person could suffer. Simultaneously, advocates also have to be guaranteed they can fulfill the professional tasks without any risk to be killed, injured, threatened, identified with the crimes committed by the clients. In my country, in Estonia, lawyers are well protected. What is proven that we have achieved a good state of democracy, human rights and rule of law. And last but not least, advocates have to have access to their clients as they protect human rights. Finally, the particular question rises, how we can influence the situation with these violations against rule of law and personally against lawyers and their clients in any given country. Many countries were listed in this report and the widespread practices of violations raise the fundamental questions. If our democracies can function properly. Have we missed something important within development of democracy as we still face shameful sides of totalitarian state? I am sure that our main task in PACE is to raise the awareness and give critical evaluation to each such case. Thank you for attention. Highly respected Maria, thanks very much for your, your presentation. And now we will go to the speakers list and obviously if you use this type of nice uh, <laughs> definitions, so I would like to ask the highly respected Jeremy Corbyn, now from the United Kingdom, to address to us. Please, the floor is yours. Are you in there, yeah, Jeremy? No? Our highly respected <laughs> Mr. Gorbin is not there, I suppose so. No, no, he's there. Hello? Hello, hello, here you are. Good morning, Chair. Thank you very much for it. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be part of the Council of Europe, an organization I've long admired. 
uh, because it stands up for human rights all across the continent. And I think this report, report is extremely welcome because it outlines the importance of independent legal representation for people and also the threats to lawyers that are existing in far too many countries across our continent. Um, I think that the importance of the report in emphasizing a couple of things I'd like to just draw attention to. One is that uh, people need to have access to law independently in front of a court. That means not just the right, but also the ability to do it. Whereas and that means in the case of my own country, for example, cuts in legal aid have meant that many people simply don't have access to court other than uh, by their own self-representation, which is a very unsatisfactory way of doing things. Secondly, the right of access to training is a very important one. That means provision of further and higher education for legal representation. And <clears throat> the third point I want to draw attention to is some of the trends that are going on <clears throat> across um, Europe are where there is um, an interference in the legal process. Um, and I think that we have to be very clear on that. And this report indicates that the independence of lawyers means that they should be independently monitored and judged, which is extremely important. Um, in Britain, there are two bills before Parliament, which uh, <clears throat> I'm concerned about, both of which impinge on legal representation, one of which is Overseas Operations Bill, which um, seeks to give a degree of impunity to uh, secret forces operating overseas by Britain. And the other is the uh, it's surveillance bill, which um, allows um, police forces to undertake undercover operations in which they themselves are then uh, immune from prosecution as a result of potentially criminal acts. So this convention that's proposed, and I absolutely admire the work that's been done on it and welcome it, means that uh, there would be a standard of legal rights and legal representations all across Europe. And that is something mm -hmm. that I think we should absolutely welcome because uh, it's long needed and I hope this the convention is adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much indeed. And now we go to next speakers. There are two from Ukraine. First, from uh, and first, Yulia Lovachina. Madam Yulia, the floor is yours now. Yeah, colleagues. Uh, hello, welcome <laughs> from Kiev. Hi from Kiev. Well, uh, despite the fact that uh, our uh, colleague uh, and rapporteur from Russian Federation said that we are not to talk and discuss about uh, particular countries. I would like to use this opportunity and raise uh, the issues we face here in Ukraine uh, uh, with uh, advocates' rights. Uh, all of you know that Ukraine has a very um, diverse political environment and sometimes our political debate is very uh, um, harsh and um, uh, environment is very uh, strong and uh, the, the, the sometimes uh, you know it's uh, it's not easy so uh, and you know that many political um, <clears throat> leaders uh, or are prosecuted in Ukraine at sometimes uh, sometimes it is uh, uh, it is real and uh, and uh, uh, you know reasonable uh, however, we can see that uh, if a, a, a lawyer or an advocate is protecting and supporting someone who is uh, very controversial politically, immediately the attacks are on advocates as well. And this is something uh, that should not be tolerated. Uh, the other dangerous development is uh, numerous attacks on the um, uh, self-governing bodies of advocates. And um, uh, by, we can see that by uh, high officials and, uh, and um, government bodies, as well as politicians. So they attack the self-government body of uh, advocates of Ukraine, namely the Bar's Council of Ukraine. The other dangerous uh, thing 
is um, and I'm not talking about these late years, uh, the, the, the current political forces. It's been throughout the years with all political uh, forces that's been in power. So it's a, a continuous tendency. Um, uh, the the um, lately, a uh, couple of years ago, we had uh, an issue with. Uh, the one of the most important rights of the bars council is to uh, elect uh, the members of the high council of justice and this uh, right was given to the bars uh, council or governance body of advocates uh, in accordance with venice commissions and we welcome this development in our justice system however they've been electing uh, several times their representatives and it's been blocked and again, I'm not uh, talking about uh, today's, uh, today's uh, people in power, but it's been throughout the years. So these, these are the dangerous tendencies we observe in Ukraine. And I think uh, that um, this convention might help all uh, over the Europe to protect advocates' rights uh, and especially information of, of the High Council of Justice, because this is really um, structural, structural thing. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for your attention. Thanks very much. And now we move to the Yelovetska Tajasko from, from Ukraine too. Please, floor is yours, Yelovetska. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, a few remarks I would like to make. Uh, first of all, um, I'm very happy that a colleague from Russia is happy about the human rights and protection of human rights and protection of lawyers in general. However, I regret uh, to notice quite significant uh, shortcomings in this report, especially uh, especially what is mo mostly alarming for, for me is no information about the situation occupied territories uh, in Europe, in Crimea. Um, it's well known and it's well documented that the lawyers uh, there, especially Crimean Tatars lawyers, they suffer right now. Uh, such an example is Emil Kurbidinov, a lawyer who, um, there were numerous attempts to restrict his work and to cancel his attorney license and to imprison him um, for, for his work. And unfortunately, this, one, this is not mentioned in, in, in such cases are not mentioned in report. Moreover, um, of course, it's challenging. We understand that uh, Russia has lots of uh, challenges in human rights protection. However, it could be more information about uh, what's happening in Russia itself. And uh, for example, uh, United Nations HRC, um, there are many uh, mentionings that uh, the lawyers and advocates, they are not fully protected in, in Russia and such names as uh, Novikov, as, as Mark Fagin, as Nikolai Polozov, uh, the advocates, the lawyers who, who uh, unfortunately suffer from, uh, uh, from real restrictions uh, of their work in, in the country, in, including intimidation death threats and lots of uh, physical violence and even killings of uh, lawyers are taking place in Russia, which is really alarming. Um, to end, I would like to, uh, to mention that symbolically Magnitsky Act that some of uh, member states of the Council of Europe um, implemented in the countries so is actually uh, named after respected lawyer in uh, uh, Russia who suffer from numerous of uh, repressions. So we should remember about that and uh, we should always um, don't play double standards. So if we talk about the situation and the reporter could also mention the situation in his own country and that uh, repressions that are taking place in, in Russia. Thank you. Thanks a lot, very much. Now I look the speaker's list and I see it's finished. But I want to actually add one aspect for, for this debate. I felt this discussion, what we just had, extraordinarily interesting. 
and having a very high morale telling how well we can actually in the Council of Europe to address issues not only in the way when it's a very sensitive areas that we are condemning others but we are looking at the mirrors and analyzing our own self uh, self criticism on our own countries there were several speeches there what I heard where we were self critical and that is a very important aspect that we can discuss also those issues openly here in international arena because then we can learn better uh, better also for ourselves about the situation so thanks a lot for this i don't mention any countries you mentioned them and 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 that's valuable discussion shechas ya hachu sprasit kasbadin bashking we want to say just react so so bilis kasanai pajalusta Глубоко уважаемый председатель, уважаемые коллеги, я благодарю всех выступивших на сегодняшнем рассмотрении этого вопроса. И буквально несколько слов хочу сказать, что абсолютно верно. Я обратил внимание, что мой тезка и коллега Александр, и, по-моему, да, госпожа Юферу Скуратовски, говорили о проблемах адвокатов своих стран. Тот, кто читал мой доклад, он, бы, он тоже увидел, что я, как представитель Российской Федерации, естественно, писал проблемы в моей стране. Это очень важно. Когда мы, в первую очередь, как граждане, как патриоты своих стран, говорим о своих проблемах в большей степени, чем о проблемах в чужих странах, то нам, конечно же, бесспорно легче сообща преодолеть эту проблему в целом. Ни один докладчик сегодня, ни один член делегации, наверное, не может сказать, что его в стране нет проблем с адвокатами. Где-то больше, где-то меньше. Но они есть, и мы все вместе должны объединиться для того, чтобы их решать. Что касается выступления госпожи Юлии Левочкина, я хотел, хочу сказать, что в нашем докладе не стояла задача исследовать положение адвокатов на субрегиональном уровне, на локальном, на местном уровне, на уровне субъектов. Поэтому мы не внедрялись, не изучали положение в Шапане, Орденны адвокатов, например, во Франции или в Сумской области, в Украине. Мы говорим о национальном э, объеме. Поэтому мы должны, я должен сказать, что проблемы российских адвокатов есть не только в Крыму. У российских адвокатов проблемы есть и в Свердловской области, и э, в Волгоградской области. Поэтому говорить об отдельных адвокатах в отдельных э, ну, там, регионе Российской Федерации было бы, наверное, неуместно. В заключение я хочу поблагодарить не только всех выступающих, я хочу поблагодарить экспертов, не села рано пяти госпожу Марию Слазак и господина Вахтанга Федорова за экспертную работу. Я хочу поблагодарить моего коллегу Власенко за его поправки на предварительном этапе, а также э, бывшего нашего коллегу Григория Лагвинского, который начинал эту работу в статусе докладчика. Я надеюсь, коллеги передадут ему мои слова благодарности. И особо, конечно, отдельная благодарность – это секретариату нашей комиссии, за активную и эффективную помощь мне в работе над докладом. И особенно, конечно, благодарю Дэвида Милнера. Большое спасибо. Thank you very much, Mr. Bashkin. Does the chairperson of the Committee on Legal Affairs and Human Rights wish to take the floor? Mr. Kilevich, the floor is yours. Thank you, President. Uh, indeed, uh, needless to say, the issue we are discussing now is one of the cornerstones of the rule of law, as we are uh, understanding. And uh, this report is really very important, and I believe that it indeed the beginning of very serious work to ensure very serious protection of advocates at the international level, at the level of conventional obligations. Uh, just like our rapporteur, I would like to pay tribute to our former colleague, uh, former Ukrainian member of this assembly, Mr. Georgi Laglinsky, for actually uh, launched uh, this idea and began working with this report. И я хотел бы также поблагодарить нашего докладчика господина Башкина за его высокопрофессиональную и серьезную ответственную работу с этим докладом. 
Uh, yes, indeed, it's true that uh, uh, many more cases could be mentioned. And uh, I agree that the problems with uh, independence and protection of advocates do exist in many Council of Europe member states. Uh, right today, this morning, uh, uh, we heard a lot of very sad examples during the debate uh, on the situation in Turkey. But, uh, of course, uh, we should not uh, fall into uh, some other extreme. Uh, so it's not a report on this or that particular country. I also echo uh, the president's uh, position that uh, we must first address the problems in our own countries. So I'm very much uh, looking forward to the adoption of, of this resolution and to the following work of uh, uh, our assembly uh, with this uh, direction. So congratulations, uh, Mr. Bashkin, and I call upon all members to support the suggested draft resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks very much, Boris. Good. The debate is now finally closed, and, and we will proceed now for the vote. Uh, and I once again would remind you, as you know already, that only the standing committee members are eligible to vote. And, and now we'll do it. That we will vote on the draft resolution we just handle, and it would be adopted in simple majority. And I actually declare the vote is open. Fifteen seconds. Please, we have only few, two, not too little, but too, too few, but please, if there are still people, please vote. I add 15 seconds more. Okay, the vote is closed. And the results. Watch it. President, there are 20 members who voted in favor, no one against, and there's one abstention. Thank you very much. And now we will have a, another vote. We will vote on the first draft recommendation because the Committee of League of Affairs and Human Rights has also presented a draft recommendation to which no amendment has been tabled. And now we should do the voting and remember to be adopted a two-third majority is required. Vote is open. Fifteen seconds. Mm 
what is closed, the result. Mr. President, 20 members voted in favor, no one against, and one abstention. Thank you very much. That means that the draft recommendation in document 15152 is adopted. Thank you very much indeed. My congratulations to the rapporteurs and rapporteur and to the committee. It, excellent work. And also thanks very much once again for a very, very pleasant uh, discussion. It was enjoyable to listen to it and, and, and that's exactly what the Council of Europe is at its best. Now, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the situation that time is against us. We had so lively debate on Turkey, a long debate on Turkey, and I allowed it because it's urgency. Uh, but now it means that two other items on our list, uh, the item number 28, the gender dimension of foreign policy issue, as well as the item number 29, threats to academic freedom and autonomy of higher education institutions in Europe, we will take those two issues out up in next standing committee meeting, not this ones. So, so that's unfortunately so because the time uh, limits for our meeting has been closed. Uh, and, and and then we have uh, that will be take place those issues on 20th of November. That's the next standing committee meeting. Who? David Kilan. Once again, the floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, once again, I voted. I voted yes to both those votes. I'm terribly sorry. There's something wrong technically. Just to make sure that it is on the record. <laughs> sorry about that. Stay. Watch it. The chair, we shall contact you later. Well, I'm not sure if still today, but uh, definitely, if not today, next week, and we shall try to find where is the problem and why it has not worked. Uh, thank you. I also apologize. It's it's uh, th this is not fair. Uh, it absolutely is not fair. Somebody is following the discussion, participating in it, and I cannot vote. So this is a hiccup. We must absolutely check if we are thinking in the future having a votes in at the level of the of the of the our council works. Ladies and gentlemen, I now move to the item number thirty, other business. Uh, that's the last agenda item on our standing committee very long standing committee prolonged forever continuing standing committee several weeks is there any other business nobody requests okay okay if that's the case i will thank all the participants and also i would like to thank all who make it feasible and 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 possible the meeting interpreters technicians members of the secretary and obviously Secretary General of the Assembly, thanks, Wojciech, you made marvelous job once again, even counting and, and guiding the whole, whole issue very well. Thanks a lot. The Standing Committee will hold its next public meeting on Friday, 20th of November. Unfortunately, that also seems to be so that it's on, on, on video. video. Uh, hopefully, next year we can really... Who? Lord Fox wanted still at the final stage to do the, uh, some statements. Please, the floor is yours. You've thanked everyone else, but I would just like on behalf of all the participants to thank you for being a very tolerant, kind uh, and efficient chair. Thank you very much indeed once again. Efficient in a way that we are a little bit late because it's already six past one here. It's supposed to be one o'clock. So thanks for your kind words. The meeting is closed.